Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live! Finally! At last! <laughs> hey! 17 oh. minutes late. 17 minutes late, but we're all here. And hopefully, yep. fingers crossed, we won't have any technical problems, although that is what I've, all I've been dealing with. Um, I think if we get any technical day. problems, Sam will get that sword out and slice you in half. Yeah, just do it. I, I, sometimes I think death would be easier than having to deal with fucking computers. Drive come on, up the come wall. closer. <laughs> That's what he says every time you get into a fight. Sex me to death. Or Gwent me to death. Do you anyway. think you'd be a bornable character, Chris? I, am I a bornable character? Would you be a bornable character in... Oh, right, in Witcher. <laughs> in Witcher. Um, Would you have the born a bornable flag set? No, I wouldn't because I wouldn't because Geralt isn't, doesn't do that, does he? He doesn't do men, I don't think. I do. He's hetero. Yeah, I don't think he does men. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I played the whole Witcher 3 and I didn't, I didn't do anybody. Oh, no, I did one hooker. Because she was cute. Well, <laughs> I mix it all right then. <laughs> Did I? Just because she looked cute. I've been all chivalrous and like staying true to Yennefer and stuff. I was, but I didn't even bother with Yennefer. I was like, "Fuck you, bitch!" By the end of it, it's like. <laughs> anyway, hello, welcome to anybody who's watching. Um, a Resident Arcade is a show where we talk about games for a couple of hours on a Wednesday night. Some Wednesday nights, anyway. It's been probably about a month since we last uh, last did it. <laughs> Yeah, missed three weeks, I think we have. It's because mainly because we've all had lots of busy things going on and, and illnesses and things being removed from our bodies, etc. So, yeah. uh, we have... I no uh, longer have a skeleton. No, Lou has had his skeleton removed. So, um, let's get on with it. First of all, we usually talk about what games we've played. And I'm going to let everybody else start because I've played every game this you week, have. this Your month. Your list is massive. I've, got, I've played absolutely everything that's possible, but um, go on, who who wants to start? Sam, I think Sam wanna... should. Yeah. I've only pl I don't play anything new. <laughs> <laughs> I can Not... tell you I can tell you that I'm near the end of Metal Gear Solid Five, but I haven't done anything else that's worth talking about. Well let's talk about Metal Gear Solid Five for the next hour. Off you go. <laughs> I will say one little thing that's really funny that I forgot to mention before. Did we talk about how a mother base you can just like beat the shit out of your own men and they like it? Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, but one of the things I quite enjoyed doing was just you know you get like magazines, empty magazines that you can throw to make a distraction, um, and you just I just throw them at my own men oh, in their face as I... they're standing saluting me, and they keep going like. Ugh. And then saluting again, and then going, Ugh, and then saluting again. Have you um, seen the? Um... The shower cutscene with Quiet. Yeah. You've seen it? Alright, okay. Do you know and how. Is, he... is this the shower cutscene or is this the, the rain cutscene? Because I've heard about. I've seen the rain oh, cutscene. Oh, I, I saw the rain one as well. I've actually seen a, a model replacement rain cutscene with uh, Ocelot as well doing loads of thrashing around on the floor. I've, in fact, there's a yeah. funnier one. Have you seen the one where uh, Ocelot's replaced with D Dog the first time you see him? Yeah, sorry, the D-Dog is replaced with Ocelot, so it's D-Dog yeah, behaviours with Ocelot's body. Yes, it's quite amusing. Yeah, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to play it because it's absolutely ridiculous. I don't, yeah, I don't know where these came from, but they're, they're, <laughs> they're very silly. They're there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of modders in the world that enjoy doing these kind of things. Uh, Guaranteed modded, there's going to be um, PC people as well who've done this. <laughs> you you yeah. love this, by the way. You're going to absolutely love this, Lou. <laughs> Uh, Alright, here we go. My anticipation is palpable. <laughs> <laughs> watch what happens though, just watch. This is this is the most ridiculous moment I've ever seen. Or the ridiculous, most ridiculous mod I've ever seen. What? What? <laughs> Bear in mind this is a little puppy that's licking your face, right? Yeah. I can show you the original cutscene, I think I've got it somewhere. <laughs> I don't quite get why he's crotch first, but it just makes it all the better, doesn't it? He doesn't it, really? seem to be liking that crotch, does he? Yes, yeah, because he's getting licked. <laughs> he's not getting licked, mate. No, he's not. That's not licking. <laughs> Some of that sounds like licked, but it begins with a D. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true that, German that dog. He's just getting closer. Oh, it's a, it's a there we go. Dog. There we go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's how you are. That, that, um... He's such a strong man. That, yeah, that... That's, in, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, man, he's pretty strong. 
That's anyway. It. What do you think that? <laughs> it looks like something from Doom. <laughs> oh, the, oh, the look at the end there. The, the snakes look like look. It's just like. <laughs> yeah. <I> just, <sighs> Okay. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so I got I got both the cutscenes the other week, uh, the the other day. There's there's one where if you come back to Mother Base and it's raining, and you've and you've seen all of Quiet's other cutscenes at least, or up to that point you've seen all of the cutscenes. She'll start splashing around in the rain and start kicking you and getting all sexy with you and stuff. And there's also there's a there's an ocelot replacement for that as well, mm. um, which I might just uh, I might just put on while we're talking, and. It's the, the quiet in the rain bits, pretty daft. It, even without flopping the models over, it's already a bit. Weird. Yeah, it's a bit much in it. Yeah, it's a but, bit um, unnecessary. The other one is is where if you come back to another base and you are smelly enough to have flies flying around you, sh and you come back with quiet, she'll take you into a cubicle and have a shower with you, and then all the oh, men. Oh, really? Yeah, all the men in um, mother base. The law, well, not a lot of the men in mother base. The lot of the soldiers are all crowd round a cage. And watch you. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't actually seen that one. I was. I was thinking of the rain one. Let's uh, or, zoom. Or uh, she'll, she'll she'll sometimes take a shower if you if you've got a loyalty up and you just go and basically stand outside a cage. Mm. She'll get up and take a shower and like then sit down again. There's quite a lot of little Easter eggs in the game, and there's a lot of oh, there's God, a hell there's so of a many. lot there's a hell of a lot of references <laughs> to films, and this is this is ridiculous. Imagine this is you know. I've seen the quiet, quiet scene, quiet. so I already know how <laughs> ridiculous this is. <laughs> she goes. Uh, the, the, cut, the cameras are up, absolutely atrocious as well, the camera angles. Yeah, right up her arse, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he modelled on? He looks, looks a little bit like... Um... Troy Baker. He actually looks a bit like Troy Baker, the actor he, he does in the face. Yeah, weirdly. He looks like Jared Leto. Yeah, he does a bit, yeah. But so so does Troy Baker. So uh, well, I don't know who Troy Baker is. Troy Baker is a voice actor who's done. Um, he's become quite big recently. He's done quite a lot of JRPGs, but he famously did Joel in The Last of Us. Um, he's oh, done okay. a lot of. He's done um, quite a lot of unsung hero sort of voice work. Like he's in this game, but he's not the main character. But he just wanted. He's a voice actor, but he looks like he should be a movie star. He's that, got that kind of look to him, but um, he doesn't seem to do any like live action. Uh, gigs that I've seen. I've never seen him in a TV show or a movie or anything. <laughs> I just noticed the uh, uh, the logo. the The logo on his his pad. It says Ocelot Love with little love hearts. Um, the emblem, the base emblem yeah. for this particular. Oh, on his on his on his shoulder. Yeah. Oh yeah, Troy Baker did um, Booker DeWitt in Bioshock Infinite. You've, played, <laughs> you've definitely played that. Yeah. It is ridiculous. Anyway, oh, like you card. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so look, look at the love in his eyes. <laughs> he does love him a little bit, though, doesn't he? Also, like he's totally in love with Big Boss. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the doves. Oh, oh, well, probably the seagulls. Muscular rays. That's enough. That's enough of that. Anyway, yeah, it's getting a bit right. too sexy for my liking. <laughs> too, there's too much. Uh, Keep too it clean much love for the going kids. on there. So yeah, I mean, I've I've complete. I actually thought I com need I completed the game, and it was the first chapter that I'd completed, and I was a little bit disappointed because I was like millions of questions still open. I haven't been able to develop half of the things I wanted to develop, but I then realised shortly after. I sent Sam a text saying, "What the fuck?" And yeah. uh, I think he kind of knew that I'd uh, just completed the first chapter and didn't respond to me. <laughs> well, plus Peace Walker did a very similar <coughs> trick where you you think you've kind of completed it, but you haven't. Uh, so it's and it's a very very similar game to Peace Walker. But it's just a lot bigger and more expansive and more detailed. <coughs> cool. Easy. So Steve, so, yeah. you've been playing a few games. Football. Um, me and Lou had a bit of a, a spat on Diablo Three, which we were intending to continue, but Lou decided to have the skeleton remote. Yeah. Um, why did we start that? Is it, there's been a recent patch, hasn't there? Which is an released there was a, right. a new season or whatever they call it on yeah. Diablo um, I haven't played it but I've, you know I've, I've got it I just haven't had a chance to have a go well we basically started from scratch again so we're just playing through the uh, the old campaign at the moment I don't know what what the new content is I think it's just an extra like well 
a separate additional story. I don't think it's got anything to do with the original. Presumably you have to finish the original story to get to play that or something. I though. think it's one of these ones where you can start it once you get past a certain level. Mm. Okay. So, sure. Mm. It's a very it's a very therapeutic game. You don't really have to actually think when you play it. You just sort of no. play it on an autopilot. It's not like playing um, uh, another isometric RPG like... Uh, well, it's not really an RPG. It's a hack and slash. But it's, it's, it's not anywhere near as involved as a game like Dungeon Siege, for instance. Dungeon Siege no, was... Th there was quite a lot to think about in that game. And th mm. it was quite engaged in the landscape. But... Diablo 3 is, you kind of play on autopilot. And, and it's on rails as well, it feels very linear. Yeah, it's very on rails. With Dungeon Siege, it was a certain element of uh, tactics involved. Hmm. Yeah. I love Dungeon up. Siege. I thought it was a yeah, wonderful game. Yeah, me too. Game. Yeah, I, I like Dungeon Siege. <laughs> Dungeon Siege 2, specifically, I, I enjoyed. Why did we stop playing that? Did, it just, did we have loads of problems? We can't play Dungeon up? Siege 1. I'm up for, I'd be up for playing some Dungeon Siege 2 if you guys are. I've Dungeon Siege 2 through, like I didn't even install it, but I think, was, it, but I I think got the problem is running Dungeon Siege 2. I think that's why we stopped last time, because yeah. people kept bailing out. Ah, uh, yeah. I think it may have been an a illegitimate version Just issue. Surely. Possibly. Yeah. Um, I've, uh, I've got a proper version of it. I think my though. life is illegitimate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a proper version because I enjoyed it so much, and I've played a hell of a lot of it, but I, it's that long since I played it, I can't really remember the mechanics of it. I know there was a, a cool upgrade system and lots of different types of weapons and... Was Dungeon Siege 3 any good? I can never, I can't remember. That's the one with um, companions, isn't it? You can have companions that, like pack mules and stuff. Oh, you can have like, that in 2, I think. pack mules in 2. Oh, right, there's something else in 3. Yeah, I can't can remember little, much about 3. You can have little... Like, um, the, the original was fantastic. Um, well, 2 is only 4 99 on Steam, or you can get the Dungeon Siege co uh, full collection for 15 It's probably cheaper on a certain other website that features penguins. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, other than that, though, um, two games I wanted to talk about. Uh, the first one, um, Me as Marta. Has anyone ever heard of it? No, no. but I'm assuming it's got something to do with Miasma. No, nothing. Is, uh, nothing to do uh, with Miasma, okay. No, not really. Um, I only started playing it because I was watching uh, some video uh, that I saw on Reddit about their movement in games. And it was going on about uh, we haven't really seen a lot of games that have like proper momentum in it um and it Asteroids? referred back to, well on about you know like um a game where oh that yeah that you mean was, you mean momentum like uh like in um is it walking movement type of thing um with characters mirror's edge type thing yeah yeah and right. it's like this video did play very heavily on mirror's edge but it said before mirror's edge was this game um and the basic premise of it is uh you've been um, expelled from whatever country or place you were, you basically got a type of plague and you shipwrecked on this island and you basically got to go around collecting different samples of moss and plants analysing them to eventually create a cure and you've only got a certain amount of time before this disease actually kills you but the momentum in it it is actually quite good because um, if you're walking down a hill for example you've got to hold backwards because if you keep running and running speed up, you'll end up falling over and injuring yourself. <laughs> if you want to go up a steep incline, you've got to get a run up. That feels a little bit like, uh, I mean, it doesn't, it's not quite the same, but it feels a bit like uh, Among the Sleep, where the momentum or the amount of time that you were running at least made you fall over because you're a kid. Mm -hmm. So if you ran little, like a small distance, it wouldn't, you wouldn't fall over. But it's not quite the same, but yeah. yeah see, see I don't know running. what you mean, but it's one of these things where if you're running and you go down um, a decline and you go too fast, you will trip up and you fall over and injure yourself. Right. And that has implications about your physical condition because you've got this plague thing, you keep getting fevers. How old is this game? Uh, I think 2012, released, bad luck to yeah, me. So it's a few year old now. Indie? <clears throat> It's a bit buggy, uh, well on my system it is anyway. Um, if you go into the menu, then basically you've got to restart the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bug. Yeah. But you don't need to go in the menu, it's just if you press escape by accident, it's like instead of tab. Right. Um, Could you um, put a link to the article about movement? Because obviously that's a big interest to me of movement in games. Well, yeah, it's something um, we've discussed before a few times, isn't it? Mm. Um, I will have to search Reddit, which is notoriously... Yeah, not now. Not now, uh, but uh, yeah, I'll be but very I will, interested in seeing that. 
Uh, no, we'll send it to you guys. So you can. It was, it was only five minutes long, but it was quite good. It even referred back to the old stuff like um, Prince of Persia and Another World about the momentum that the characters had in there that you had to kind of run to get up certain jumps and. Mm. That was more animation based momentum, wasn't it? And that you needed so I know, but that was the animation like to kick in. A, an initiation yeah, it, of that, that game mechanic. Yeah, and it's still making the player think about it. That's the point, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like you can't just jump on that it. Ledge. You've got to run to jump on that ledge. Yeah. yeah. Hmm, cool. Interesting. Yeah. I think. I mean, I think a little bit that was in the 3D Prince of Persia as well with the momentum and certain moves, mm. uh, like the wall running and things like that. You could kind yeah, of do it from a standstill, but like they. It did. They had a little bit of it in there, at the very least. The thing, you know, simple things like rope swinging. You had to build up your swing and things like that. But it's. I like that in games. It's an. In, it's like a. It's yeah. a good way to get immersed. I think. Does the plague account for the just in the video we saw there the sort of jaundiced, coloured skin. Uh, it doesn't really that could just be yeah. That could just be bad textures. <laughs> yeah, it could just, just be just being shipwrecked or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I did uh, find with the whole movement system is that it's extremely intuitive. Like you automatically hold back when you're going down an incline, all of a sudden, to stop yourself from speed, you know, from getting gaining too much momentum. Hmm. So yeah. It doesn't work quite well. Kind of sounds like a, a first-person trials. How you, if you accelerate too quickly in trials, your bike turns upside down and stuff. Yeah, like well, yeah if you don't counterbalance it, yeah. Yeah, which is quite also, interesting. Also, um, another mechanic uh, that I completely forgot about. I have to apologise, by the way. I've half my face is not. Um, so if I slur my speech a little bit, that's why. Um, we used to you it, don't, don't <laughs> You don't get given a map. Um, you get little kind of hand-drawn sections of map, but you've then got to go out and uh, triangulate your position. Using various monuments or landmarks, which is again probably not new, but it's the first time I remember seeing that in a first person. I quite like to see games that don't hand it to you on a plate, though. Yeah, you know, and 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 like even even games like Far Cry. I know you've, you've got a map in Far Cry Three specifically, but you you still kind of have to work your work your way around and where think you know where and there's a there's a lot of hand holding there's a lot of gps markers and you know i mean gta was one of the first games that i remember that had a gps in it like a, a coordinate system that would actually detect and determine where you need the shortest route to where you were going to want it to go in um, in games like gta 4 it's it's really needed because of the the layout of the the streets Go on, Sam. Sorry. I was going to basically say what you said. It was it they introduced it in Grand Theft Auto Four, but it was also the the game where you really needed it. Yeah, which speaks it... to because they're building a more realistic city. There aren't as many recognisable landmarks because the real world isn't full of cool landmarks that to help you know where you are. You just got streets. So yeah, the GPS in GTA Four was very helpful. Yeah, I mean, it it was as you said, it was needed. You couldn't you couldn't go down some routes, uh, and you quite often just hit a bloody brick wall because you're, you know, because just because of the layout of the streets. Um, anyway, did yeah, GTA sounds... 3 come with a with a physical map? Did didn't it? Because yeah. I remember they referring to a paper map. But GTA, I mean, all the they other all GTAs, did. they were a lot easier to get around. You could just basically, as the crow fry, flies, most of it, and you could just get to where you wanted to get to by driving over things. Yeah, I remember three in Vice City. I learned the layout of the entire map. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. You do. You play them that much. You do. Map. Oh, I, I could jump into San Andreas now and know my way around like all yeah. three cities. That's how much I've played that game. <laughs> all, all, all of the GTA, even four, I could probably do that with now. Uh, I've played it that much, but yeah, yeah five, more or less. Five, five, yeah, probably five as well. But four is probably the most difficult though. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. I'll um, I'll talk about a few of the games I've done because there's a few games that you've played, Steve, that we've played together. We've not hey, together, but we've not played together. separately together. Um, I want to go. I'm going to go quickly through some of the, the mobile games, the casual games I've played. Um, so it's a game called uh, Does Not Commute that I've been playing, and it's uh, it's actually really fun. It's a, it's a you, you basically get 60 seconds to start off with, and you have to drive your car just basically using left and right to a destination, and it tells you a story. So the first time it'll it'll say Mrs. Jones went to the shop. And then it drives, and then as you go further and further and further. Now this guy's terrible at it, unfortunately. So he's just rewound the car. But um, it, the the story evolves, and there's all these different characters involved. But you have to basically drive around what you've already driven around. So there's this guy. If you see the guy, there's a there's a car on the left, the blue one, which he's already just driven. Now so you make your own traffic. Yeah, and and by the end of the the section. 
There's fucking hundreds of cars going all over the place, and it's really difficult. So you end up having to be really precise. But say, for example, you've got 60 seconds to start off with. You can get 10 seconds, 20 second boosts occasionally. Um, and you can try and weave in and out of different routes to get to play because you can go between houses and you can go over landscape and things like that it's actually a lot of fun for a little mobile game and i don't know why i downloaded it i just it was i think it was on one of the top 10 or something and i'm really really enjoying it <laughs> um, that's a clever mechanic i like that it is really clever but the problem the problem is is i don't pay for mobile games generally i just get the free versions and just play them the problem with it is you cannot save it so i'm a you know i play mobile games on the toilet um, but I don't play them for hours at a time, and you'd need hours to complete this game, probably. Whereas this is <laughs> look at this mountain. It's just every, there's traffic everywhere, but it gets really hard as you get on. I got like three sections into it, and just ended up. I just ended up like pausing it, coming out of it, and then it had to start all over again because I couldn't save it unless I bought it. But I might buy it eventually. It's one of them fun ones. Anyway, I played a game similar to that. Um... Where you've got to organise the traffic. Do you, the big difference is that uh, you didn't have free reign of where you drove. Basically, you just set the cars off, and they followed the pre-programmed route. Right. Okay. Uh, coordinate them, but looks like an interesting idea. It looks more like a quaint novelty than something I'd actually really enjoy to play for anything more than about twenty minutes, which I can understand for a mobile game, but I can't imagine wanting to play through hours of that. It was. It was in. Uh, I, as I said, it's not something I'd probably play loads of, but it was fun when I did play it. Um, secondly, I've, I said I've been playing a fair few casual games. So, secondly, I've been playing uh, Sim City Build It on uh, Android on my tablet. This is me playing it. I've uh, I've got a HDMI mini cable, so I can now record off my tablet if I need to. Um, staring at menus. Well, look, you collect coins from buildings occasionally, do you? Yeah, it's it's. <sighs> awfully addictive now it's it's one of those games that every single possible opportunity you have to play you have to that you can speed things up by paying sim cash and sim cash costs real money and two million sim cash costs 70 quid you know i haven't paid a single penny towards it yet my city's huge i mean this is i recorded this about a week ago um and i've figured out a way of making a decent amount of money there's a global trade system and everybody buys things off it so i'm basically playing my game by building stuff like making logs and seeds and textiles and stuff and putting them on the global trade system and just it's 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 i wouldn't recommend it because i'm addicted to it <laughs> and it's it's, just, it seems like ea cashing in on it is, the same it city is. franchise with a, a, what looks like an absolutely typical Mobile game. Yes, it is absolutely. Almost like a Facebook game. It's worse than Simpsons Tap It Tap Out or whatever it was, and that was. I mean, I, I got that thinking. Oh, cool, Simpsons game on the tablet. I can have a got fucking awful. I played it about ten minutes, <laughs> uh, and but it is. It is just a horrible tip, it, and and it and it's easy to get sucked into this. But it is a free to play, pay to win, or pay to get to the top of an arbitrary leaderboard that doesn't actually mean anything because you don't speak to anybody else in the game ever, you know. And there's already someone at the top with nine 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 points. Uh, no, it's just um, it's population or something ridiculous. I don't know. I don't even know what the lead if there is a leaderboard, but it's one of those kind of games where everybody, you know, you, it's it's linked into Facebook and you're supposed to be able to share it. It's awful. Do and you I, actually get to build your city? Do you get to place things and roads and stuff? Everything that you see there, I've moved in my current build. Um, let's see if I can boot it up while I'm talking about it and, and hopefully show you on the camera but um, it's yeah it's very it's very different to it's very different to what you see on the screen there I've actually moved all of my buildings to the beach area because you get more population if they're near the beach and you buy you things on Miami. the beach there you go so we've got 2,400 cash for 6,000 you can get sim you get simoleons and then you also get cash so that 8,500 sim cash for 80 quid equates to something like 2 million simoleons or something, and simoleons are used for some things and sim cash is used for other things, and you get a bit of sim cash, but you don't you don't get anywhere near enough to buy any I, of the good I'm things. Waiting, I'm waiting for Steve to explode and... Mm. Go on. Go on, okay. mental, because this is absolutely... <laughs> this is completely typical of what Steve hates and... These are casual games, and I, I agree. I absolutely agree, but I'm fucking addicted to it, and I can't yeah, stop playing it. Yeah, you will be, that's the point. 
the, this is this is my annoy. This is the annoying thing about it. Is I played it and I sat. I, I, I said to Sal, said to my wife, "No, I'm I'm not playing it for much longer." And it's been like two weeks now, and I'm I'm absolutely and utterly addicted to it. So now I don't know if you can see it or not. Actually, it's not for a particularly good that. Hang on, let's put it on a bigger camera. So I've actually got a much bigger city. What the hell tablet is that? Uh, this is the Nexus. Uh, Google Nexus 10, why? It just looks enormous. It's like a 10 everything inch. Everything you've got is just enormous. It's a 10 inch. It was the best at the time. Don't know. It was as much as an iPad when I got it. But I think it's about four years old now. Anyway, yeah, don't play it. It's fucking awful. <laughs> but it's it's totally got me, you know. I can't stop playing it, but I haven't spent a penny yet. so well, And I'm not going to. Yeah, you just just think Kingdoms of Camelot. Well, Kingdoms of Camelot at least had a little bit of social interaction with other people, and I, and I, and I spoke to people and enjoyed myself while I played that. But this is just a time sink. Yeah. And I, and I'm not when I'm thinking about it, it's not really that fun. I, no. In fact, it's not fun at all. It's not challenging. But I'm addicted to just building the next thing and <sighs> tell me off. I'm I'm so glad that that kind of game just doesn't appeal to me. I don't play SimCity or any of that stuff. I'm just not into it. And when I see stuff like that, I'm just like, yep, yeah, not not going to be getting into it anytime soon. When you spend as much time on the toilet as I do, you need <laughs> you need casual games to uh, <laughs> to get yourself going. Anyway, so they're the casual games that I've been. I mean, I've been playing Plants vs Zombies too as well. Still, that's still got my attention. Um, and that's about it for casual games. But anyone else got a, a game they want to talk about quickly, quickly or not? Or well, not? I, um, I've the, the game that I've been sinking the most time into recently is um, a free mod for Deus Ex Game of the Year Edition, which one of my friends alerted me to called Deus Ex Revision. Is this the original Deus Ex? Yes, it is. So basically, you get the. Um, the game of the year edition on Steam. It was a quid. It was uh, knocked down to a quid um, on the day of this launch, and then you can install this for free. And basically, what it does, it's not a remake. It's like the original game was designed properly by people who knew what they were doing with the engine. Because one of the big criticisms leveled at the original Deus Ex is even at the time it was released, it wasn't a good-looking game. No. It was clunky. It was very square. It was primitive looking it was ion store yeah so what they've done is that they've, they've addressed this with um with revision by tweaking some of the gameplay stuff but most importantly completely revising the layout of the levels to the point where there's lots of interest and stuff in it now like they haven't just up put a few extra bins in and change the texture here and there they've, they've changed the layouts of levels well I, and added extra stuff to it. On your recommendation, I've bought it now. I've downloaded Revision. Sorry, I bought the Game of the Year edition on Steam. Um, mm -hmm. Downloaded Revision and installed a couple of high-resolution texture packs and sky boxes and things like that. It looks wonderful. Much better than what we're looking at here because um, I've got some nice textures in there. But um, all I did was start the game up and walk down the pier and I was like, oh, 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 there's that. Oh, look, just look at that on the right. There's a little shed. There's a shed. <laughs> just things like that. That if they've done that with the rest of the world, and in the fact, whole, I yeah, the whole game has been revised. I walked into the area where all the guards are walking around outside the Statue of Liberty, and there's just loads of bushes and the box, extra boxes and things, and that to me means that I want to explore it all. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it again. <coughs> Absolutely. Can anyone remember how long it took them to play through? Uh, Juice X originally. It's I played through it a couple of times, ex, uh, and it, even after I've completed it the first time, and I know what I'm doing, it still takes a long time. There's a lot of gameplay in it. There is a there lot. Is. It, it, it goes on for a long time. I've been playing it now for about ten hours, and I'm not even halfway through the game. There's all the Paris stuff to do, which is a hell of a long section, and then there's all the, I mean the catacombs themselves that take a, a good few hours to get through. There's a bit um, of a disappointment in it, though. What do you mean? Um, in the original, when you were in the uh, in the tr uh, the triads base, <laughs> if you went like bunny hopping like through the base like I did, and accidentally land on the dog and kill it, everyone turned against you. That <laughs> it was game ender basically. We stood on the dog, you ended the game. <laughs> I can't remember. I, I can't remember the dog bit. There's a dog stood in the courtyard, and Steve came bounding out, hopping as he does like any quake player, self-respecting quake player does. 
and landed on the dog and killed it, and all the triads turned on him, and that was the game over. Fair <laughs> enough. Their favourite dog, by all accounts. Yeah, yeah. Well, by the sounds of it, yeah. Um, yeah, oh, fucking hell, there's all that the high rise area you have to go and. Oh, God. Just brilliant. There, there is a. Game. Yeah, there is a. This is a remake tre- very, very right. It's been seven or eight years in development, and the people that have worked on it have been very sympathetic to the gameplay and to the experience hmm. there's a few things you can turn on there's a few mods which change things tweak the gameplay even more but you don't have to turn them on um they call uh, i think it's shifter and bio mod they just do things with the augmentations they give you different sets of um augmentations because some of the augmentations are pretty much useless like the uh, swimming augmentation yeah there's some that i never used one place so they changed it for other things they're like agility so you can rather just... than just being able to swim very fast you can jump and run faster and stuff. Just look at so how nice cool those box tweaks. looks. Those boxes look, though. Mm. Just the normal map on that. Just it's, unless it's a new mesh entirely. That's a new mesh, a new mesh entirely. Yeah. Right. We say that would look a hell of a normal map if it was. Cool. But yeah, go and get this game. Um, What's it? Quid? It's a quid or something. Two quid on on Steam, isn't it? I now? think Deus Ex Game of the Year Edition is two ninety nine at the moment on Steam. Um, you can probably find it cheaper around, but even for that price, this mod's free. Um, go get it. So, quick, quick question to all three of you then. What what do you choose right at the very beginning of the game? <laughs> one Ooh. one thing to, one thing to note: um, most people will be aware of the, the the little bug in the original, whereby you can drop the um, skill level of your pistols, and you get the point back when you start the game, so you get extra points. That doesn't work in this anymore. What? <laughs> that's the oh. one thing. Of, that's one thing to fix, which I wasn't aware of. Not just pistols. Everything. There's a few other things that are. I, I no, you drop. start. Off, you start off trained in pistols, and you can drop that down and get some extra points. But yeah, when yeah. you start the game, you start trained in pistols again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for the stealth option here. With you go for the Gordon Freeman stealth option. <laughs> but um, yeah, I go for electronics. I like to hack. I think oh the no most no no! I was to start the game is hacking. I actually meant yeah, the, weapon. the choice of weapon. I like to pick them off for the, from a distance. I go uh, for the tranquilizer darts. Now see, ah. originally I went sniper, but this time around I went for the trank darts. I've never How went for the trank darts. Did you originally go Gepgon? I thought you went Gepgon and blew everything up. It sounds like something I'd do. It You've does... played it, haven't you, Sam? I played it for like two minutes. Oh, so no. That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably run on your laptop, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, it would easily. It probably would, yeah. Yeah. It's but awesome. Look, you, get to, you get to beat up terrorists with a crowbar, if you're yeah. so inclined. It's amazing. The beautiful thing is that you can do whatever you want in this game. You can really... They, they've thought of everything. It's, I opened up a, uh, a small bistro, and it, it was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've sunk quite a few hours into that. Yeah, so I played a little bit myself, but I haven't I haven't really started it again, and I, I do intend to now. I've got it, and I said that the high resolution texture pack really does make a difference. Uh, there's the Steam; it's open to Steam Workshop, or was it so mod? Is, Ma- is that on the Workshop, or is that a separate mod? I think it might have been on Mod D. I don't think it's on the Workshop actually. Has it I got a workshop? I, that's what I mean. I don't think it has a workshop. Um, I don't think it does. No. <clears throat> anyway, but yeah, get it. Brilliant. One of my favourite games recommended. ever. And if they've done better for it, go for it. Okay. Shall we um, talk about Skyrim, Lou? Yeah. Um, I also installed Skyrim again, just because I had a sudden urge to play through Skyrim. Not played it since about 2012, 2013, I think my last save was. Play through, you mean play a bit? Pl- well, yeah. play a bit. I've played 10 hours so far. That's dropping yeah, the water in Skyrim. Yeah. It's, it is a drop in the ocean for Skyrim. You're probably, uh, what, level 5? Hey. Uh, not even level one, I don't think. Oh, well, sorry, I'm about level two. <laughs> or not... Yeah, I'm level two. Level zero point seven. Um, I'm playing it with a a couple of just kind of visual mods. Nothing mega fancy. I didn't want to just go crazy and start installing loads of mods because there are so many out there that you'd end up just spending all your time installing mods. Uh, but Chris and I had a little go with something called Tamriel Online, which is quite interesting. So. Someone's basically had a go at making Skyrim co-op multiplayer online. But uh, unfortunately, it, unfortunately, it's not very good at the moment. But it still, it still works sort of. If uh, you're not close to each other, so say say for example, one of you starts in 
uh, on top of a mountain somewhere and the other one starts right at the beginning of the game it has a few sync issues but also whoever the host is <clears throat> all of the animations and everything works around the host but as soon as you move away from the host everyone's in a t-pose <laughs> so yeah, all the- people float towards you like this and spiders <laughs> is coming to- <laughs> yeah, spiders that don't, don't move or anything it's quite funny it's- Honestly, I mean, it, it is very interesting. I mean, it shows you kind of what you could get if they ever thought about making these games co-op, which they don't. They, they won't do that. No. Uh, I don't think Bethesda will ever make the Elder Scrolls games uh, multiplayer in any way. I think they could do. A, if they did, though, it would be it would be well received. If they did, I would only want them to make it um, small scale co-op like this. <laughs> I, would, I mean, Elder Scrolls Online just showed that oh. it's a completely different kind of game. It's oh, no, no, it, yeah, it needs to be small scale. It needs to be the minimum of like four people or something yeah. in, a, in a game together. Um, and it all could. doing the same quests, but the quests need to be synchronised somehow. And that would be the challenge. Well, they've enabled com- like companions. It's something that they've been sort of pushing as a feature for quite a long time. Now, I didn't really use them in Fallout or... Um, Skyrim that much just because I kind of like the idea of the lone adventure sort of angle but they're pushing it in Fallout 4 quite heavily that there's companions to take in various ways like all the way through the game companions is in yeah. uh, AI, AI companions yeah. but I'm talking about like it's it's not a, a huge leap to substitute that in for co-op um, conceptually at least you know like as in yeah. if they were to go look it's still a one player game you're not playing against like you're not going to run into a bandit named Jeff, who's another bloke who's going to c- cut you up. But two of you can you can play with a mate. Maybe drop it in that. Like you just take control of the companion that you've already got. Yeah. That well, that's, there you right. go. There's another guy in the game now. You can see um, just crouching with the little arrow above his head. <clears throat> he just ran off from him, but he's over there. There you go. So you, it does work. It's just that it's quite unstable and it's got a lot of a lot of sync issues, but. It's impressive considering the the. Yeah, it is impressive considering they've not really had access to any of the source code or anything. They've mm. done this all just from hacking. Um, another thing that struck me when I installed Skyrim, even vanilla Skyrim, it's still a gorgeous looking game. It for, does look for a game good. from 2011, it still looks amazing. It's still a beautifully crafted world. I still think it's a way better world than The Witcher's threes. Just because it it's so. There's more as you, as you said when we, we were well when you were criticizing Witcher 3 as you're walking around in Witcher 3 I, I agree there are things that I want to go and look at but there are a lot more in Skyrim there are a lot more things that look interesting plus you know that you can go inside pretty much every building in Skyrim whereas the Witcher 3 obviously has a lot of closed places and closed buildings yeah. and there's not as many caves and you know dank places that you can go and explore but isn't the Witcher 3 map like five or six times larger than the Skyrim? No, Skyrim's map is huge. Uh, the Witcher 3 has got the biggest map out of any game. Any game ever. I think Daggerfall any would probably claim that. Ever. Or possibly Elite Dangerous. <laughs> Dead. Well, any game of that type, I'm sure it has. It's a, it, in it, it's a different kind of experience, though, because one of the things about Skyrim is it is... I know The Witcher has exploration in it, but... It, it, the Witch is more about it, almost like solving cases. I've talked before about how you could make it into like a, a fantasy, you know, gumshoe noir detective type thing where you you find a story in a, in a case and you go and find the cause of it, kill the bad guy or whatever, and then you move on to the next one. Yeah. Whereas Skyrim is more of a like, yeah, you you go, you, you might see a dragon flying up on a mountain, so you go, oh, I'll have him. So you go up to find it, try and get a new word or whatever from a wall, and you go, ah, I did that. So you start going back down, and then you see a door, and you go, ooh, there's a cave in there. And you just wander off into the cave for the next hour and a half and do that. That's the appeal of that, that, those games. That's what we want. That's what we want in Fallout 4, to sort of go to a place and then find a, a, an unlocked door or a place you can go into and just get lost going on your own little adventure that you make up for yourself. That's it's the, the Witcher 3 isn't really trying to give you that kind of experience, I don't think. So they're not, they're, not, they're, not, they're not comparable in those specific terms, I don't think. Oddly really. enough, with Fallout 3, I felt that was a much more directed experience, and I enjoyed it because the locations were really evocative. 
like a little lamplight and stuff and the, the huge um, satellite. I found that a lot of the time Fallout, uh, particularly when you get into the, the city itself, it didn't quite deliver on the promise of its, like, you, I don't know, it felt like there was a lot of potential for these really cool and epic things to happen in Fallout 3. Not that many actually did. Mm. Like, you go to a huge city bit, but there's only actually three buildings you can go in there. Whereas I like what I like about Skyrim is what Chris said. If you're willing, you can pretty much get into everywhere. There's only that one. There's like a couple of places that you have to do story mission wise, but most of the game you can get to if you can fight or sneak or break your way into it. It's you can go there. I, I like that. It feels like you can take ownership of the world in a way. Yeah. Uh, I hope that Fallout Four is like that. I hope that when you go into a city in Fallout Four, I can go in every single building. Because that's what I want. Hopefully. Yeah. That's what I wanted in Grand Theft Auto V. I'm still waiting for Rockstar to deliver that. I know if you're making a city with that many buildings in it, it's a ludicrous proposition, but I still want it. I still want that to be a thing. <laughs> that's the future. Yeah, I no, I'm, I'm totally with you. It, I I wanted to make uh, my game, or every building you, know, you could walk in in a city, but it's just... It's unbelievable the amount of work that has to go into creating the assets for those things. And yeah. even with massive teams, it's a big undertaking. There's all the you know QA you have to do. There's, uh, it's ridiculous, but... I said Skyrim did it, but they, they did it. Skyrim did it by creating things called kits, and they, and they just basically created a lot of prefabs and a lot of like corners and room, you know, different building types and then they gave a kit to a, a team and that team then went off and built the environments using that kit but they started doing that in in Morrowind when they first first created Morrowind. I read somewhere recently um, Oblivion had one guy doing um, all of the dungeons and I think Skyrim had about four or five people doing mm. all the dungeons and it really shows that there's a lot more uh, Skyrim doesn't seem to have repeating dungeons whereas Oblivion and Morrowind basically had cookie cutter mm. dungeons. There are repeating areas of dungeons or not areas rather there are repeating prefabs if you look at the corners in some of the dungeons there's about five or six different types of corners and they're all the same but the way that they've been put together they all look very unique but if you I said if you go into an oblivion dungeon entire prefabs entire yeah. entire, entire dungeons have been dungeon, prefabbed yeah, yeah but yeah, you, whereas they built it out of kits in skyrim and they've there's actually an article i think it might have been on gama sutra gamer sutra whatever um Two yeah, um, there, there, there might have been an article somewhere. Sorry, there definitely was an article somewhere, but I can't remember where. And it, it went through detail of how they put it together. And it's really interesting that you know they can still do it very quickly just by clicking sections together, but it still takes quite a lot of time to do that. You know, one thing that uh, stands out in the uh, the worlds and explorable areas between the likes of The Witcher and uh, the Elder Scrolls, when you come up to a building in The Witcher. You generally just walk through the door when you come to a building in Skyrim or any of the Elder Scrolls. You get a load screen. Yeah, hmm. true and enough. Then you get transported to a different area. Yeah, there are actually mods that have uh, that fix that. There's um, so there's a mod for Skyrim called Open Cities where there's no load screen between the inside and the outside of the cities. I think there was mm -hmm. one for Oblivion as well. I think that was a memory issue just for mo for um, not mobile for uh, for console. Yeah, it could have been. I, I don't know, actually. I never really thought about it. I'd, I know with things like culling and, you know, LOD, it's not, it shouldn't be too much of a problem these days. But, it, again, that takes a lot of time to set up. It does. Um, and, and get working and making sure it, it doesn't affect performance on all of these different platforms as well. But The Witcher managed it. Yes, The Witcher it did, did manage it. Was, it. I remember seeing an article about how they did that, and uh, they actually had to still tweak it after the release to get it to work a bit better, but it was still very clever the way they did the occlusion so that you could have a seamless world without it running to a a halt. Yeah, mm. I did I did appreciate that actually. It's though it's the little details like that that really sort of they make it smooth and you want the smooth experience. You know, whenever they whenever they talk about no loading screens, which is a big thing these days, isn't it, when they release games. No loading screen there's a loading screen, it's just hidden. It's in the background. It streams mm. yeah. yeah. It's a load. And there's there's uh, a there's a method inside Unity um, that allows you to load levels or load scenes within each other. 
um, you can stream them as they I mean I've never actually got it working or, or needed to get it working yet but I imagine I would if I started doing a bigger part of my game yeah, it's, it, that's built into the new Unreal Engine as well. If you play any recent Unreal Engine game and look around, you'll see things pop, fading in and popping in hmm. um, as they're required. I, I'd just... much rather have pop up and pop in than uh, than a loading screen. Hmm. I know that uh, um, Naughty Dog, kind of from Uncharted and The Last of Us, have hidden a lot of their loading within cutscenes. So you have a loading to start all three, or you know, all the Uncharted games, and The Last of Us has a load to start. Then once you're in the game, there's never a loading screen during the gameplay, but there are cutscenes interspersed fairly regularly. Mm. Some of them are dead quick, like some of them you get a cutscene that's literally like <clears throat> two lines of dialogue and then it's back to the game. But they sort of hide it through that, which I think is a pretty neat way of doing it as well. Because you feel like you're still in the game then, don't you? Even if it's a cutscene rather than stopping to read a bit of info about something whilst you're waiting to go through a door. What, what in chat has just said something interesting. Uh, loading is the escalators of games. And that's actually literal in more, in quite a lot of places. They use escalators to load the next section of the level. I walk up escalators. Oh, hang on. Lifts. Yeah, I do too. Elevators. He meant elevators, I believe. I meant elevators. <laughs> what, you got it wrong? Yes, what? I walk up wrong. elevators too because I'm just that hard. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on then. Let's move on to the next game. Um, I've been playing a few alphas. So, sorry, Steve. I'm I'm trying to spread it out because I've got so many games that I'm I'm trying to keep everyone involved at some point. Um, I've played a few alphas um, or, or be beaters and alphas. So first of all, Star Wars Battlefront, uh, which was only a couple of days of alpha, and I put a stream online on our channel, uh, as you can see by my little face in the bottom left, and I'm shit at it. But it's oh look, it's Battlefield Three. Oh, it's Battlefield Three, but they're really, really nice looking. It's dead simple, but they are like when, when one thing I noticed is when people walk around in the snow and when it's a tessellation, but it's it's people walk around in the snow and when the ats walk on the snow, there's big indentations and it's done really well. It looks really pretty, um, and the, it's fun. It's not Battlefield. It's really not Battlefield, but it's. It looks like Battlefield to me, mate. It's not. It feels it feels a lot more arcadey and a lot quicker. Than Battlefield ever was. Um, it's a lot simpler. I can tell you that. I don't know if they'll change that again. It is just a beta, so um, they said that there was only hip firing as well, and you couldn't aim. But you can aim. You can iron sight aim um, or scope aim in a lot of places. I mean, I got I got owned obviously because I don't play these games anymore. Um, I didn't manage to play any of the hero characters because uh, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker were running around, and. I didn't manage to drive any of the vehicles either, so um, I, I got a bit bored, I have to be honest with you. <laughs> but I still enjoyed it from what I did play, but I imagine I quite enjoy it with friends. <laughs> Excuse me. If you can ever connect to a server with your friends, as we uh, found out the other week. Is that, there, is that a thing? Is, that, yeah, this, you, is this, you, this game? It's this game, yeah. yeah there's, um, there's no ability to select a server. There's no server browser whatsoever in this game. Um, and there was oh, Mythalos actually just said as well, and yeah, I mean, I, I only played in maybe about three or four games, but it was unbalanced. Every time you're on the Empire side, you win. There's mm. there's no way the Rebels can can win. Um, I'm amazed they didn't balance it better, because basically, as soon as an attack gets within range of the shield generator, it shoots it, and the game's over. Well, it's just like the movie, then, isn't it? Yeah, but. I know, I know. It's probably more ba should be more, maybe more balanced towards the Empire, but it's a game, you know. You're supposed to have a chance. Don't be screwing up the cannon. The rebels <laughs> can't win in half. That, yeah, that's what they've done. They have. It is actually true to the film. So, <laughs> so fuck you, haters. <laughs> and yeah, every time you you start or every time you choose a, a enemy, you get to choose one weapon, one side weapon, and a number of skills or cards, as they refer to them. So you get like a thermal detonator, and you can choose a I don't know depending on what kind of class you are you can choose like a turret it's more of a a battlefield crossed with a team fortress I would say uh, it's certainly got more of a team fortress feel to any to, to battlefield to me um, that doesn't endear it to me because I don't no like I, I'm not into it either it's it's just repetitive it's a, it's a repetitive shooter you know and I'm not into that these days mm. But it might be worth a, a blast, you know, with mates. But as I said, if you can't do that and it has to be online, then maybe not. Maybe screw it. I played the single player as well. Um, there's a 
not a campaign, but the single player like horde mode. Um, can't remember the exact name. The capture the pod is one of them as well. You you run around and you try and capture escape pods that land on the on the planet before the AI gets to it, and it's quite easy to be fair. And again, I normally quite like horde modes and and that sort of thing, kind of fighting right. off unlimited enemies. Especially in the Battlefield context, um, me and Greg used to play the original Battlefield 1942 um, against the bots on Iwo Jima, and you fight them back all the way to the volcano, and you can't get them any further back than that. They constantly spawn the volcanoes. It got harder and harder as you push them further back. Yeah. It was great fun. It was really good fun. I didn't mind that, but that, that's that's more of just an AI, a, a bot version of the main game, though, isn't it? Mm. It was I, good fun. I, I've enjoyed most of the battlefields. I, I didn't, I haven't played four, so I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what that's like. But Battlefield like three, three. I, all right, I quite enjoyed three. Um, I did play it a lot, but I didn't get addicted to it like some of our friends did. <laughs> oh, I've got a friend who's put about three thousand hours into it. Something, yeah, something ridiculous. Um, second game that I've just played recently, second uh, alpha, was the Doom Closed Alpha, which I can't show any footage of unfortunately. Can you, can you talk about it? Um, I'm I'm not allowed to show any footage, that's all it said So it, it didn't say anything about talking about it because NDAs normally talking. say don't talk about it as well. well. It, it wasn't an NDA, it was a terms, it was, you have to yeah. tick when you, no, but it, it literally said you're not allowed to share or stream any content online, that's all it said and I was very clear about reading that so, uh, and to be fair, if I get banned from future Bethesda fucking alphas, who gives a fuck? You know, I've, I'm not going to show any of the footage. I've got a little bit of footage just for, you know, my own sake. It feels like Quake 3. I have to be honest with you. I've heard that. I've heard that it feels like Quake 3 too. Yeah, and I didn't enjoy it at all. I played uh, maybe three matches and I was getting my ass handed to me again, like I would do. Felt I couldn't turn off um, mouse acceleration. And I just didn't. In I didn't. I, the 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 weapons didn't feel good. I didn't feel like the sounds were in that. I mean, all it was was an alpha test, so they could test the uh, network code, so they could test the you know the the weight of of players playing it. But I didn't really enjoy it that much. I have to be is, honest. Is it? Do, can you connect to servers? Has it got a server browser? And yes. Does it do, so it's traditional. Uh, See, you could the, the, you could choose a server. Well, no, no, you couldn't actually. No, it's not. I'm I, talking out my ass. You you just click the multiplayer button and then it took you, you into a game. game. Yeah, but that's only because it's an alpha, I assumed. Right. Okay. But there's also it, the also the fact that I didn't I didn't really like any of the weapons in the game. The shotgun, I really wanted to enjoy. I really wanted to run around and shoot people with a shotgun. It just felt like a I don't know, it felt like a pea shooter. It didn't do much to me. And there's this there's this like every now and again a demon would spawn and it was one of the other AI but one of the other players and you have to collect some kind of token and that and they become a super demon for a few minutes or something. But again, multiplayer running around shooting people, I'm just not into that anymore, so it probably wasn't the best thing for me to play. It's slightly worrying that the um that the game's weapons aren't good because do what a doom is big things with its weapons. I mean, a double barrel shotgun in Doom, the super shotgun as it's quite rightly called, it's one of the best weapons in any game ever. Yeah. Um, like, every weapon was good in Doom, I think. I can't think of a bad weapon in Doom and they all had the uses. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, so, it doesn't It doesn't feel... It, it, Ah, I'm it hoping, it's like not just going to be multiplayer, is it? It's going to have a single player campaign, surely. It is, but but what, since when have its games single players ever been worth playing? Well, <laughs> no, you're right there, I suppose. It's an interesting one. It is very interesting because I can see why they've gone for the Quake Three style gameplay because Quake Three was their most popular. Well, Quake game. Live is still getting played as well, quite a yeah. lot. Yeah, it probably shares a lot of the code with Quake Live, in fact. I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't played Quake, 3, Quake Live, so I don't know. But it's also interesting in that they've gone that route kind of knowing that Quake 3 is a bit passe now. And Quake Live is still being played, but by a lot of people who were just Quake 3 players. Yeah. They're yeah. not really appealing to a new audience there, which is interesting. 
But I don't suppose you can really with Doom because you, by making Doom a reboot of Doom, you're already appealing to a very specific retro audience, an audience who are already on board. Hmm. So there's not much room for growth there. It's very interesting where they're going with it. Well, I'd like to play it though. Well, I think if, I'm not sure if the alpha's still open. I think you might be able to sign up if you've uh, what is it? The New Order, Wolfenstein, The New Order. If you bought that before a certain day, you could sign. I didn't even know that I bought it mine before a certain day. I just put my email, signed into my Steam account. Oh, just remember that was another problem I had as well. I've got four monitors, and monitor one is one of my portrait monitors on the left or right. And when I started the game up, it started on my port one of my portrait monitors, and it was in the resolution, so it was. 1080 by 1920 and it was all skewed and stuff so I couldn't read the terms anyway I had to click yes to get out of the menus so I couldn't I couldn't actually read the terms on the screen because it was squished and then when I got into the game I clicked the video settings to see if I could choose my monitor and change the resolution crashed so I was like I sent actually sent a, a bug report to them and uh, sent them all uh, process monitor logs and stuff just to make sure you know just in case they need they, they wanted that but just in case terry pratchett wants to boot up a game of doom 3 <laughs> terry doom... pratchett yeah with his six monitors terry pratt what why has he got six monitors he's uh, doesn't matter chris what else? he's Sorry. famous for having six monitors is he oh he is was he... when he before he died is he famous for that yeah uh, yeah, it's uh, not famous for Discworld or anything. It's his six monitors that he's famous for. I was going to say, I think I'm, I'm going to go out and live and say, out of the four of us, you're the only one that knew that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you're cleaning up from a Terry Pratchett fan, then. Anyway, just so... reminded me. You reminded me of a, something else which I played very briefly, but um, I had another bash of the the new Unreal Tournament. All right, yeah. Uh, it's really nice, but it's Unreal Tournament. It's just UT 2004 with really new, like nice graphics. <clears throat> They haven't really gone anywhere with it. They haven't tried anything daring with it. Well, that wasn't the intention, was it? They were just showcasing the engine. Yeah. They want other people to use the engine and make games with it. It looks really pretty, I have to say. Pretty. It's a gorgeous looking game, but you don't really notice how gorgeous looking it is when you're playing multiplayer. You're not, you're not looking at any of that detail. You're just looking at people's heads to shoot. You're looking at all the shine, the shininess. I was, I was looking at all the shininess. Not when, when you're I was playing. playing not, not when you're playing, and you've got a lot of these sort of maps called shells, where they're basically just the layout of the map for testing, because hmm. they are really trying to test the gameplay rather than the graphics. They already know the engine is good; it's the game that they're trying to test. Hmm. But uh, I enjoyed it. But I enjoyed it in the same way that I'd enjoy U- UT 2004 if I fired that, or even UT 98. To be brutally honest, it's essentially the same game. But all of these shooters have roughly the same game as the predecessors, though, aren't they? I mean, they do. But when I played um, Tribes Ascend, I think it was that's the most recent one, isn't it? Uh, Which is yes. still going. You can still play it, um, even though it's been abandoned by uh, the company that made it because they have focused on Smite. That felt fresh in in a kind of retro way. It was fast and it was crazy, but it was new. And that was really, really nice. And I very, very much enjoyed that game. I don't think any of the Tribes games played the same, though, in my experience. I mean, one was a fluke that it was so popular because of the physics. Mm. It was an accident that skiing became popular in that game. Two felt very different to one, but I still liked it enough. Three, again, felt very, very different. It was more rigid um, than two. Was that Vengeance? Vengeance, yeah, I loved Vengeance. Yeah. I loved the single player campaign and that. I was I played that through quite a few times actually. Um and for Ascend, I have played it, but I, it, is it is that the one with the slingshot on it that you can the, the hook or is that Vengeance? Uh that no Vengeance is the hook. That was a famous hook game. Mm. Um Ascend is just quite a lot like a very polished version of Tribe Two. I thought Tribes Ascend was an absolutely brilliant game so underrated hmm. and it's such a shame that they tried to go for a micropayments model and killed it themselves it's because they had so though, much potential it? it was genuinely fun and genuinely different yeah okay so I'll let someone else have a go now I think you just talked about Unreal Tournament loose so stay 
You've you've played yeah. a few other games, haven't you? So what have you what have you had? I've uh, been given the first paid for Witcher DLC a go anyway. Hard you've been given it. Been, no, I, I've been giving it a go. All right. <laughs> Numb lips. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, good. Good. It's it's had very good reviews. Yeah. Um, engaging story, new characters, new area uh, to explore. Challenging enemies, which was a problem towards the end of uh, the original because it just became quite easy. You've got new gear. Um, you've got this rune master who can basically like combine runes into any of your equipment, whether it be sword or armor. Right. And that gives you certain buffs or certain abilities that weren't available in the original game. Okay. Uh, it's good. I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't want to say too much about the story because I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Yeah, it's, of course it's not. Quite new out. Um, <clears throat> but it's completely like, different to the original story. It's got nothing to do with that. Although you do meet a few people from previous Witcher games. Well, uh, they've all got. Uh, in The Witcher 3, you met quite a few people, didn't you, from the other games? Yeah. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an expansion in that it, it isn't tied to the central. Uh, um, story. No, no. Like you're in a um, new place with a new mission to do. Um, no, you're in the same place, um, but it comes up as a, an additional mission. A, a, an additional mission. You've got to go to a notice spot to start it off, and it recommends you don't start it until you're at least level 32. Okay. Okay. Hmm. hmm. It's it's tempting. I'm not sure I've had my fill, though, of Witcher. You know, I've got so many other games to play. Yeah, but the witch is good. It is good. It's very good. It's very, very good. And I've been off it long enough now to maybe maybe think about going going for it. But I'd have to get the season pass, I think. Well it's whether or not the season pass can be worth it because I managed to get the DLC for seven pound. And what's the season pass cost? Um it's the same as the game, isn't it? From yeah, pretty much. How much are they planning to release? Though what's um, the Three planned, I think. Seven, fourteen, twenty-one. For the yeah. same price of the game, I would imagine they're quite big. Then. Yeah. I'm also, I'm also, I'll be honest with you, I'll be tempted to support the developer as well. You know, pay full mm -hmm. price for it for a season pass because it's not many developers that I have as much respect for as uh, as them. You know, they've done. They've done a tremendous job with The Witcher Three, and they've they've done a tremendous job supporting it afterwards as well. I mean, yeah. they really, really do care about their fans, or at least they seem to care about the fans, and that's enough, you know. Perception is nine more. Nine they have given. Off. That's exactly <laughs> what was in my head. I didn't say it. <laughs> just going back yeah. to what I said about um, Skyrim, just just quickly. Um, one of the big things that is no, one of the things that's obvious between Skyrim and The Witcher Three is the budget. I think if CG Project Red had a big budget like Skyrim, then they would have created an even better game. Mm. And then, so that what they've done with the limited budget they have, or they had, is amazing. So I I completely agree, Chris. I think but, supporting CG Project Red for the next game, they're going to produce a belter they, of a game. They've all they've they've already got enough money for that. I mean, they've made a lot of money off The Witcher Three. Yeah. But beside the point, I I. It doesn't matter. It does. I'm, I'm all for paying full price for games that I really want and really enjoy and really, you know, really go for. But I will look for deals for other ones. It's like music, you know. I like so much, so many different types of music that I'm, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be like paying full price for every CD that comes out. You know, it's, uh, it's difficult Especially with you still games. Buy CDs, don't you? Well, you know what I mean. Streaming, whatever, like <coughs> Spotify, Netflix. That's what you do with MP3s, <laughs> in it these days. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm tempted. Heartstone. I would I would recommend it, but obviously you've got to be prepared to sink a bit of time into it. Well, I'm always prepared to do that, but whether or not I want to sink my time into that or something else is. Yeah. I mean, I'm still playing Metal Gear Solid Five. Still got lots of time to, to put into that. I've chucked 90 hours into Metal Gear Solid 5 but I'm not done yet. I'm probably on more than that. 90 hours? Jeez. Yeah, it's a big one. 
getting your money's worth. You, oh, you could argue yeah, totally. that you could argue that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of you know you go to the same places a lot in Metal Gear Solid Five, but every time you go, it's engaging. Every time you you attack the same target, it's like I mean, I, and again, they've they've also improved all of the. Um, all of the missions in the second chapter as well. They've they've done the same missions again, but they put them on extreme mode or super stealth mode, and you can't get seen once by an enemy, or you made it very it's difficult. A, it, it's a select few. It's not all of them. You don't yeah. play through the whole game again. You, there's a certain select number of missions that you do. They're not in order. It's just you yeah. seem to randomly go. Oh, this would be cool to do again in a hard mode. Is chapter two like a new game plus sort of thing? Then no, it's no. it's a continuation of the story. Um, okay. I've only done maybe two missions in chapter two, but there's a lot of additional like go back to do old. One of them, for example, is you get, and I really enjoyed this one, and I thought I think it's going to be really good when I eventually get around to doing a recording of it. Uh, you get, you've remember that you've built up this army throughout the game, and you've got all of these weapons and all of this equipment. But there's one of the missions I can't remember the exact name. Is it subsistence where you get plonked into an old mission and you've got nothing. Yeah. Literally, not no weapons, no uh, cardboard boxes, no, no stealth buddy. camo, no buddy, no intel, nothing at all. And you just get told, right, this is on extreme mode. You have to go and do the same mission again, but with no help whatsoever. And you have to procure all your weapons on site. And it's really good. I really, really, really enjoy playing that one. And there's I'm looking forward one, to more of them. There's only been one subsistence mission. I'm on the mission like 41 now. Oh. And there's still only been one since mission 30, which, yeah, it's a bit disappointing. Because I, oh. I liked it, I thought it was cool. It was like it felt like the old Metal Gears where you did go in with fuck all and you had to like get your equipment as you went and make do with what you could find, rather than going, oh, I'm going to give myself the leap, sexy loadout of death, which you can do for most of the game once I you've mean, leveled up. Yeah, I mean everything. I've got I've got tranquilizer, everything, and you know, non <laughs> and tranquilizer rocket launcher. Yeah, I'm not you. Have there's a rocket <laughs> hand you can get, which is a, a tranquilizer <laughs> rocket hand that stuns your enemy. Which is so daft, but also at the yeah. same time. Yeah, and then there's a, there's a grenade launcher where you can you can you know, launch smoke grenades, but you can also launch stun grenades from them and and sleep grenades as well. Yeah, and you can attach that to the underside of your your back or your some of the guns that you've got as well. Anyway, enough going on a Metal Gear tangent again. But I really enjoyed that and hope they do more of them subsistence missions. I really do. Anyone else? I want to talk about Hearthstone. Uh, Hearthstone. Okay, so do I, because I've played it too, for the first time ever. Um, I played it basically because um, I got uh, a free code. It's free to play anyway, it's one of these pay-to-win card games. Uh, but I got a free code, so I got a free deck. Um, so I played through it. And they release like, a daily challenge where you get 40 coins for completing it. And then in order to buy a new pack of cards, it's 700 coins, or you can just pay 2.99. Um, I persevered with it for a while. Uh, and I've been very strong in the fact that I'm not actually going to pay for anything. Mm -hmm. I've unlocked a fair amount of it, but I've just found myself getting very bored of it now. I have unlocked all of the heroes. Yeah. Um, I haven't played much of it, I have to be honest. It didn't take long to unlock the heroes. Uh, so you you've got was it ten different heroes? Nine, nine or ten, and then, then like you've got a rogue a priest, and they've all got different card sets. But there's also shared cards as well that you can choose between them. I have unlocked all of them, and I went into the arena because I got a first goal for free or something. Where yeah, you choose yeah. you you choose all your cards. You choose like thirty odd cards, and then you go and uh, fight someone online. And I did that. Again, got my ass handed to me, and then just cancelled out of it and thought, "Fuck it, you get three goals, but I couldn't be asked." I was like, well, oh, hell. "I've not actually been doing that bad, even in the arena." Um, the problem I've got is just one of incredible frustration, <clears throat> because there's a time limit per round, which I don't know what it is, but it must be about two minutes. Hmm. And there's certain scenarios where it's obvious what needs to happen, where you know I'm getting dicked, and all I've got to do is kill my guy. But people just dwell on it, and they'll try and defeat every one of your characters first, and it just pisses you off. What do you mean, every finish. one of the cards, or the, yeah. the minions? Yeah. Like, why not just end the game, get it all week? You just don't get anything extra for killing all the minions, unless uh -huh. it's a certain bonus that day. 
Maybe that's trolling. Maybe that's Hearthstone trolling. Yeah. Or oh, there's been scenarios where I've went into a game and I've been playing absolutely, you know, it, it's all in the look of the draw, essentially. It depends what cards you get to start off with and what ones you draw per per round. Mm -hmm. But there's been scenarios where I've been absolutely dicking the person I've been playing, <clears throat> and then they'll just bail out. <sighs> it's just the whole, I don't know. The whole community just seems very, very kind. Of do you, do you, you know that it's it's extremely popular Hearthstone and it's got yeah yeah it's got world championships and yeah, it's yeah. A, a big esports game. It's huge. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people that do a lot of YouTube videos for it as well. I've never read. I've watched a few people on Twitch, you know, just playing casually. I've never really got into it because I knew that it'd be too much, you know, not really for me. And I probably won't play it that much more. I've just been playing it <coughs> downstairs on the laptop when I've been bored watching telly or something, you know, occasionally. I, I enjoy the game, the concept of it, the cards and, like, you know, the bonuses you get is fantastic. But I just think that it's the community that kills it. If I was playing with you guys, hmm. even with physical cards, it would be so much better. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm up for some games if we can do that. I don't know if we can play against each other. I'm not sure. I'm up for a few games just to have a laugh. I mean, I've, I haven't got much of a deck or anything like that for anything, but I'll, go, I'll always give it a go. Always give it a go. Um, we need referees for online gaming. Well, they do have. They do for the pro games. But you can't know, just quit out of a pro game, can you? So. Yeah, well, they don't have the general whatever. Because when people have the cloak of anonymity of I don't know you and I don't have any consequences to being a dick, people will be dicks. Hmm. One thing that adds to that as well is that you can't actually speak to the other person. You've got six or eight um, pre-selected like, comments you can make, like, you know, greetings, I will destroy you. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Hurry and up. Not one of them is for fuck's sake, hurry up. Just kill me. <laughs> yeah. Mythos says you can play with a battle net, which presumably means you can also match make. Hmm. And Battle.net offers chat facilities as well, so I assume well, there must be some way to match up with people because otherwise how would the the professional tournaments happen? Hmm. There has to be, yeah, if they're thinking about it. Well, unless so, they've got special um, servers for for those <coughs> tournaments. I imagine so they you, would. You two get, hook up in this game and record it. And I didn't even know Steve was playing it. I assume, to be fair, when I mentioned it, I assumed Steve would say, oh, I've had a go at that because it's, I know it's your kind of game. But I've only, I only did it because uh, the you know what the, the Diablo three patch came out. I opened mm -hmm. up Battle.net to um, to download the patch, and then noticed Hearthstone was on there. And I went, oh, oh, that's where Hearthstone is. Download free, go for it, and I had a, had a quick go. Said it's all right. It's not, my, not it's, really my cup it's of not tea. Not bad for a I card game. It. Yeah, yeah. But Gwent's better. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. <clears throat> Anyway, some some Gwent news later on. I'll, uh, in fact, I, I'm going to be talking about it probably around about now. In fact, let's let's. Uh, so I've also been playing a game called Tabletop Simulator. Have you heard of it? To start off with. Yes, no? I've heard of it. So Tabletop Simulator is exactly what it says on the tin. It simulates tabletop games, card games, mahjong, um, checkers. The reason I downloaded it, or the reason I bought it, and it was like 20 quid. It was an indie game, but it was like 20 quid, the so cheapest I could get it, um, was because you could play Gwent in it. And I thought, oh, that's cool. I'll have a go at that. Downloaded it, installed it. It's really fucking complicated, because you literally have to move all the cards manually and do everything. It's a tabletop simulator. <laughs> you know, it is. Yeah. It, again, it is exactly what it says on the tin. But you get inside the game world, you get like a little tablet that you can look things up and the rules are on it. Um, so you can browse the internet while you're in there so you don't have to come out of the game um, there's coins and dice and all kinds of things you can use within the game to, to but it's up to you guys so it's multiplayer, you can have as many people in the game as you want but obviously Gwent's one versus one so but you you, you have, have to enforce the rules by yes. putting things around on the board. So it's basically simulating you sat at a table. But you can also flip the table as well if you get pissed off. <laughs> That's quite cool. Um, uh, it's it's interesting. It's um it's cool, and I think if either any of you guys are up for getting it, I wouldn't mind playing a few games in it, not just Gwent, anything else, because there's chess. Compatible? Uh, think It'd be so. Really interesting if it was Oculus. 
compatible. I think it is. I think I read Rift somewhere. Um, but it's quite complex in that in that you can you can set up your own games and there's I, w I went into a few servers just to observe. There's not many that aren't password protected because I think it's again friends playing with friends. Um, but the ones that weren't, I went in and just observed, and I couldn't do anything. I couldn't mess around with anything on the screen because obviously it was locked for observers. But there was people playing all kinds of games on there that they imported all their own assets into there, and they'd imported all of their own models and you know little chips and things like that. Everything and there's poker in there. There's every kind of tabletop game you can imagine can be made in this game, and I, I thought it was a really novel, interesting concept. Um, I don't know, I want to try and find some footage of it. There seems to have been a big hoo-ha about Oculus Rift support, whereby someone pissed someone off online and it didn't get added, even though it was one of the stretch goals that was passed on Kickstarter. So, I don't know if it has got VR support or not. I'm sure they'll probably add it if it doesn't. I, I, I'm sure I saw a button for it somewhere. Um, but I said, yeah, you get a basic choice, as you can see there. You get a basic choice of a card game, a checkers game, chess, goal reversey. Um, you get different table types as well. But you can basically set up your own game. You could probably set up um, Warhammer in it if you imported all the assets. Um, which you might as well just play Warhammer, though. <laughs> if you're doing that, you might as well just get a table and, and go for it. A lot more expensive, though, isn't it? And you've got to be in oh, a physical yeah. location. I mean, I'm sure there's, uh, you know, it's also there's obviously Steam Workshop integration as well. So <laughs> that's how you play chess. <laughs> well, that's what's interesting about it is you could just do that if you really wanted to, but <laughs> I bet 99.999% of games end up with tables flipping and chess pieces being thrown well, as no, far as it possibly you, can. You can turn all that stuff off if you're the host, so it's up to you what how you host your game. So if you you don't just have random people coming to it, it's for you and your mates. And if your mate is a table flipper and a dickhead, then he doesn't play again with you, does he? So, I think I think it's a really cool idea. I think it's a real cool novel concept. Yeah, I remember I remember seeing this early on. I can't remember where I saw it, but I, I have seen this before. I didn't realise it had come this far. But it's it's really um, in depth. I mean, there's a lot of different stuff you can do in it. You can draw on the table. You can, I mean, you can just play poker in it if you want. You know, just have a few. Having a few mates round, have a few beers. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So, um, God damn it, I've played so many games. Downwell. I saw, uh, I saw Bio Bioshock in there. You, what, is there a particular reason you've been playing that again? Um, well, um, Sal and I, on Friday nights, often play games together, and Bioshock seemed like a good choice, because uh, I bought the, ages ago, I think it was in bundle, I got Bioshock 1-2, and infinite that's it isn't it one two and infinite yep. um i got them all in a in a pack so i thought well I'll give them a go again i've never played it on the pc before bioshock but i tell you it's a fuck around to get working a right fuck around to get working the original again, mouse acceleration it's really really sensitive the mouse as well the menu if you turn your sensitivity down to one on the mouse and then move uh, yeah. Your mouse within the menu, it it stops every five seconds, but that's perfect for gameplay. And there's no, it's awful. Um, but the resolution keeps changing. All the video settings keep resetting every time you reboot the thing. You can't alt tab out of it. It's it's built for consoles, though, wasn't it originally when it first came it's out? It's a real engine. It's a real engine three, I believe. So it's still built for consoles and obviously QA'd on consoles. It's awful. I believe it was it was released as an Xbox three sixty. Yeah. Exclusive, and then later got done on the PS3. But it was, yeah, it was, it was an Xbox game first and foremost. Right? I mean, I've played it through on the 360, and I think I've only played it through once on the 360. But anyway, we're playing that at the moment, so that's why that's on my list. I won't show any footage of it. It's you know, everyone knows what Bioshock. We know Bioshock, yeah. yeah. Um, I've been playing a game called Downwell quite a lot. It's just a little. Uh, it's a new game that came out, new indie game that came out um, in the last week or two, and it's a. Uh, it's it's a vertical um, shoot 'em up type thing. Um, yeah, I watched a review of it. It actually looks like a really good fun game. I have to say, it's, it's You're falling I, down a well and shooting on your way down, basically. So you've got this little dude. I mean, I actually did a review. This is my review on on uh, on our channel in Resonance Arcade. 
Um, but you, you basically got gun boots, and you have to upgrade the gun boots as you go along. But it's a, it's a procedurally generated kind of eight bit style Metroidvania shoot 'em up hybrid, and it's a lot of fun. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Just it's dead simple. You collect gems. You use those gems to upgrade your boots and upgrade, like, get loads of different power-ups. You can jump on most enemies, but the ones that are bright red you can't jump on because you die. And most of the um, most of the enemies are Metroid-influenced to some degree. Uh, that's it, really. But it's it's good, and I would recommend it. It was like, I think it was five quid or something on Steam. You probably get it cheaper now if you really want. Oh, no, no, you know what? It was two quid on Steam. It was ridiculously cheap when it came out, the day it came out. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be much more. It's done by a Japanese guy, and uh, he's done really well on it. Three days, I think he made a profit, and he's... Uh, it's, it's hard. It's a good-looking game. It's a really nice-looking, nicely animated game with a, a good feel to it. It's very juicy. It's got, yeah. It's, and uh, it's, indie circles. It's got a really juicy uh, juicy sound um, sound set as well. It's It sounds awesome. Like that puncher I've just picked up. It's like a proper shotgun type noise you know it's it's got it's got that i don't know it's really satisfying to play it but i I keep going back to it i can only get maybe two levels into it though it's one of those really unrelent sorry relentlessly difficult games to play Uh, and there's a leaderboard on it again with people with ridiculous scores uh, completing the entire game in maybe a minute and a half or something you know uh, and there's, I don't know how many levels there are, but it's procedurally generated. But there are a certain amount of levels I think you can go through. In between each level, you get to choose like a power up, and they're random as well. So you can have ones that shoot faster or longer. Some of them that increase your gem high. Your gem high gives you more. There's loads. I mean, there's so so many possibilities in the game. It's uh, it's great. I'd uh, I'd recommend it if you're into anything like that. Give it a go. So two quid though, two quid brand new on Steam. Probably about sixty pence on the unmentionable sites or something. <clears throat> I remember playing, pay, paying two pound ninety nine for a budget game on the <coughs> Spectrum. Yeah, on tear. Going around the newsagents and picking up a cassette off a, a carousel. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, okay. I have played two other games. A game called One Forty. Which is a rhythm game. I, well, I really like the music in it, and I really like the way that they've used the rhythm as well. It's a platformer that you have to it's, you have to solve puzzles listening by listening to the music. Um, okay. Let me uh, see if I can find a video. <clears throat> Actually, I think I recorded some videos somewhere. Here we go. It's it's better if you can hear the music. Unfortunately, it's not going to be great without it. But well, if you can kind of explain to us, I might turn the music down a little bit so the stream can hear it at least. So it's like a it's a constant beat that's going on, and you have to time your jumps based on the beat or time what you're doing based on it. If you hit any static like that guy did there, you're dead. And as soon as you get into the beat and you start to understand how each of the puzzles work, it's a lot simpler uh, to, to play. But there's some really challenging areas. I think I've got about three or four levels into it. <laughs> this guy doesn't hasn't got the he hasn't got it, unfortunately. But um, that's it, really. That's all it is. But there's a lot of different challenging puzzles in it, and I really like the soundtrack. As you come into different areas in the game as well, the soundtrack changes. As you reach, like it'll add in extra layers, extra extra tracks into the into the game, into the soundtrack as you're playing. Sorry, it's really hard to concentrate with the soundtrack playing in my my ears. What what kind of music genre is it? If you had to it's, sort of guess, I would say it's electronic. Kind of by the time you finish a level, it's probably I would say electronic dance house. By the time you finish a level. But it's I quite like that kind of music. I've been listening to it today. Um, so it, does the music build over time? Then the further you get in the level. Yeah. So it starts with a really basic beat, and then as you get more, if you go to the next puzzle, or if there's like three elements to the next puzzle, there'll be three tracks playing all at the same time. So you'll have the bass, then you'll have like a, a treble, like a main lead sound. Like when now this is just uh, changed. The 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 visuals change as well. People on the stream can hear. There's a new sound as well that's going. 
and it every time one of those static things moves there's another sound so it's just it it's a rhythm game <laughs> that's the only way i can really describe it without actually showing it i don't even know where i got it from it was on a humble bundle i think but i don't even know when it came i just thought i'd have a go of it but a rhythm a rhythm sort of puzzle platform is yeah, it's quite a, a novel idea i think this guy has yeah. really hasn't got it i mean i'm not great at platformers but this guy hasn't got a clue what's Where going death, on Chris? oh sorry so hard It is. It's one of those. As soon as you get, you understand that it's a, a, you know, it's based on the music. It's probably a lot easier. Just look at him. <laughs> Just stop it. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna. I'm gonna record a playthrough of that and go. Look, mate. This is how you do it. It's what. Okay. Two other games are played. One with Lou, and one that we're going to play, and we need to agree when we're going to play it. So there's a, a game that's going doing the rounds at the moment uh, called Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Have any of you played, heard of it? Yeah. yeah. Actually, we talked about it a while back, so you must have at least heard of it. It's a game, it, it originally came out to promote uh, virtual reality um, on the PlayStation 4, I think. I think they've, they were it's trying to... Morpheus. Yeah, the way, I think it was a, a, a release for that. It's not out yet, obviously, but I think it's come out pre prior to that. Anyway, it's out for, on Steam as well now, and you don't need VR to play it. You can just use you know, your mouse and your screen. It's fine. But essentially, it's a bomb-diffusing game, and you... Oh, I have seen it. You, one person diffuses a bomb, and then all the other people in the game... So it's like a local multiplayer game. All the other people have a manual... And they have to tell the person who's defusing the bomb how to defuse the bomb. There are six different, mo well, up to 12 different modules on a bomb. Let me find it so you can at least see some visuals here. 12, up to 12 different modules on a bomb. There's things like a serial number on a bomb, different batteries, and all of these things make a difference as to how I, as someone who would be defusing the bomb, would tell you guys what I can see on the bomb. And you would look in the manual and tell me what to press and what to do. And I played it with my wife a few weeks ago. And my God, she's never been so stressed in her life. And she was the one who was doing the manual stuff. But you're, Did she's, you tell her there was an actual bomb, Chris? That's the thing. is At one point, she actually had a laughing fit. She got that nervous with it. She actually had a laughing fit and couldn't... And I was like, look, the bomb's going to explode in a minute, love. I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> she was actually she, she I think she was control she was trying to defuse the bomb at the time and I was reading the manual but it's actually a hell of a lot of fun it's a he and uh, the whole point is is that the person who is defusing the bomb cannot see the manual and the manual and, and the people who with the manual can't see what's on the screen so I have to describe to you guys and this is why is it, it would work perfectly on a stream or perfectly remotely what's on my screen you would then tell me what's it's it's good it's really fun and uh, you should, we should we should have a good uh, good laugh playing it. It's uh, it's got there's a little bit of nightmare in there, isn't there? I think with that kind of thing, the the, the sort of teamwork of yeah. having to solve like a, a problem so, by discussing it with each other. So what I would do here, for example, is I would say to you, right, there's a big yellow button that says press, and you would go right, okay, look in the manual, okay, does the button is it a big button or, or, or does it have a strip next to it or is it has it got a green light above it you know that kind of thing and and it's really fucking difficult because especially if you've got some of them later the, the, all the ones that you see on the screen now dead all dead simple but they take a while for you to learn how to communicate with each other how would you describe that that's a star some boob things a lambda without a bottom and a greek candle thing <laughs> You know, but then there's also on top of that there's there's one later on there's a there's a uh, there's a Morse code one, and I can see a light flashing, but that's it, and I have to tell you what the Morse code is for the light flash, and I swear to God yeah. we couldn't get that one. We kept dying on it, and it's really difficult. But it's it's a lot of fun, and I think we should have a go if you guys are up for it. There's a game yeah. that came out a few, a few years back called Space Team, which was an app. Um, and it's described on its website as a cooperative shouting game for phones and tablets. 
Yes. Um, similar kind of thing. Well, it's a similar it's a similar thing. You basically you're all in the same spaceship, and the spaceship is escaping from um, an exploding star, and you've bas- the spaceship's falling to pieces, and you basically got to shout to each other to adjust certain controls on the panel of the spaceship. And the controls have randomly generated names mm. and randomly generated settings. You've got to say, like, set the beveled nano buzzer to 12 and things like that. There's, there's, and it uh, gets the, more and more frantic as it goes the, along. The manual is insane. It's got some, it's got some crazy logic in it as well, because obviously I'm, I'd be saying one thing, and the manual says either it properly or says it's completely different to what I'm saying. It's like, I don't know what the fuck that symbol is. It is from the Greek alphabet, but I don't know what it means. It's a U. Oh, there's a there's one game as well that's that plays with all of the different pronunci English pronunciations of words. So there, there, and there, and there's one that's your, your, and you are, as in you and uh, and are umbrella Romeo. It's crazy. So you have to I have to explain all of these, and then there's like six. You have to get six in a row or something in order for it to diffuse, and it's mental. Some of them are dead simple, like the the wire. The wire ones, you know, if there are three brown wires, then cut the red one or something, you know. But there's mm. some more complicated... There's a, a complicated wires one as well that gets more complicated. Anyway, I think it'll be like a lot of fun. I think this would be a great, great fun game. I think a couple of beers, get on the stream one night, or just do a recording of it. I think it's uh, it'll be a lot of fun. I think it's... Uh, yeah. I've got I've got the game Maybe already, so... Maybe a recording. Huh? Maybe a recording. I think, I think a good, get a good stream as long as we get people coming in if... Um, some of the lads want to come and join us and tell us what to do. In fact, no, they wouldn't be able to because they would be able to see the bomb and they'd have the manual, whereas you guys wouldn't be able to look at the bomb. So you just see my face and I'm going... Etc. Okay. Let's give that a go. I'm, I think that would be great fun. I think it would be awesome. And I know it would yeah. be awesome because I've had fun with it already. Last game, Terraria. And it was a fail, wasn't it, Lou? Yeah, we started a game of Terraria thinking that we could maybe speed run it and decided that we're not very good at speed running Terraria. <laughs> so we played we it about an hour and then I just I just went, I think I want to turn the recording off. And then I went, I don't think I'm into this. I'm bored. Yeah. We, we've, I, say, I like to say that we've end-gamed Terraria, but we haven't. There's a lot of stuff still to do. At the the very end of the game, there's the whole moon fragments thing or whatever it is, the lunar madness stuff. Yeah, but and I, I, we've, we've put a lot of hours in the Terraria now. We have, and starting again just felt a little bit. Oh God, bloody hell, this is slow again. Yeah, it didn't help the an expert mode as well, which is a oh, nightmare. It's fine. It's fine. We just got bummed to death by zombies. I did. We did die quite a lot. Okay, so moving on. Has anyone, unless, uh, anyone else has got another game that they have played? Not recently. <laughs> oh, the only other game I played was uh, Prison Architect, the new release. There's a, a breakout mode or jailbreak mode that they've released. Has, have any of you played Prison Architect since the release? Nope. Came out okay. about about three weeks ago now because I said it came out a day before one of our streams and we've cancelled a few. Um, yeah, and I did I did a stream of it, but it was a bit long winded, so I fast forwarded quite a lot of it and uh, quite enjoyed it though. You, you break out of your own prison, or you can break out of a random Steam Workshop prison. Um, it loads it up, and you just have to work your way out of it. But basically, I just ended up killing everybody and in the prison and burning it down. I, I could have escaped. I could, I could have escaped age like, like within minutes. In fact, I did try and escape as quickly as possible, and I managed to escape in about thirty seconds from one of my prisons. Um, some of them are really difficult because of the security, but I just walked into the kitchen, got a knife, stabbed everybody that I saw, and then walked into the office blocks, uh, got a lighter, and set fire to everything I could see. <laughs> and that was basically the game. But I just I just spent the entire time running around killing everyone. It was wonderful. And uh, it's a you should all... indulgent escape when you stop stopping to set fire to everything. Oh, I, could, I said I could have escaped within a few minutes that time, but I thought, nope, going to burn it all down. <laughs> and then, when the uh, fire brigade arrived, I stabbed all the fire brigade up. Just for, just for a laugh. Because okay. you're a lovely person. I am. I'm a lovely person. Moving on then. So, next section. Way of the exploding list. Oh! 
Zero reactions from Steve there. Yeah, see yeah. that? Fuck you. Fucking immature <laughs> bastards. I'm just, uh, um, the numbness is starting to wear off on my face and it's really hurting. Oh, oh dear. Oh. You better drink some more of that cold fluid. Yeah, it's so cold actually, it's room temperature. Oh, oh even better. I'll watch your lip, otherwise I'll drive over there and fuck you up. <laughs> Not with a soggy face you want. I fucking will. Hey, you could take a punch or two. Actually, maybe not right now, now it's been... Uh, He's got a jelly enough. jaw. <laughs> okay, so has anyone got an idea? Or anyone in chat got an idea for the way of the exploding list? I've I've run out, I have to be honest. Maybe we maybe we retire this. Yeah, we've done a lot of lists, haven't we? Hmm. Yeah, I've got, I haven't got anything in mind. Favourite week of gaming that you've ever had? No. She has. We've done week. favorite remakes, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Balls. And we done, I think we've done favorite games we both want to be remade. That's the other thing about it is we can never remember what the fuck we've already talked about. Oh, we can. <laughs> Best weapons again. Favorite amnesia <laughs> moments. <laughs> Silent yeah. Hill, obviously. Uh, I've got one on my list. Where is it? Go on. <sighs> It's awful though. Um, favorite favorite exploration slash interactive movie slash book game. As in, I, I, I take it's anything from. <laughs> I take, yeah, like I take anything, anything from Dragon's Lair all the way up to Dear Esther and Gone Home and. Um, Shadow of the Templars Two, I believe it was. Shadow of the Templars Two. Uh, I've heard of it, but. I played a demo on my play on a PlayStation demo disc and it was really good. I'm not just have a proper name and sure it's about. <laughs> Say that again, Steve. I said I'm not entirely sure I know what you're asking for. So I don't know either. That's what I mean, it's shit as so should we just not bother? The Walking yeah. Dead. Telltale Walking Dead type games there, so Yeah, what? that'll do, that'll do. Yeah, alright, yeah, all of us love the Walking Dead one. Let's move on. Um I mean, played it. Okay, so, gaming news, rumours. Why have you got a lot of players? Because I've been disassembling hard drives. Uh. Uh, gaming we've news. Got a lot of, we've got a lot of gaming news. We have, that's so all I thought I'd move on uh, quick. 21, okay. 21 24. Hang on. Are we a bit late today? How long have we been we streaming? Are, yeah. We started the stream a quarter to. Oh, so we're not that late, but. Okay, let's, let's let's try and get through the news as quickly as possible. Okay. Oh, this news I wasn't happy about. Metal Gear Solid Five. You can insure your forward operating bases for real money. Now, your forward operating bases are you have a single mother base in the game, which is your single player base. But there's also you can buy you get one for free in the game. But you can buy forward operating bases to expand your army, have more staff, and have more skills. Um, for each of your what they're called Companions? platforms so each yeah. platform in the game so you have a command platform you've got an intel platform uh, intel uh, increases the amount of reports you get from your intel team such as there's an enemy here or there's a uh, there's a, a medical plant here etc um, the combat one allows you to send out combat units on on missions to get to get money and resources, etc. There's quite a lot, there's quite a few different platforms. R and D uh, improves how it tells you, allows you to upgrade your weapons quick uh, to more advanced versions, etc. But your forward operating bases are just basically duplicates of your mother base, but they're online, and other players can infiltrate them and take out your soldiers, kill your soldiers, or exfiltrate. Um, extract them and take them onto their own base and take your resources away. When they do that, do they play the game normally or is it just something like a dice roll sort of thing? No, no. Well, there's there's dice roll type mechanics in the game, but not the forward operating bases. They actually come into the game as Snake or as a soldier. I think it is just Snake, actually, as you can do it. And, you, and they infiltrate your base and they can take out your soldiers real time and That's extract cool. your resources real time. And you get in... As soon as they get seen by a UAV or a camera or a um, if they're stealth, you don't know that they're there. But as soon as they get seen by anything, like a, a soldier or camera, etc., then you get informed, and you can go in and take them out. 
and I've done it a few times and it's it's really stressful because there's some people who are really bloody good at it because they'll come in and they'll take like half your resources and you'll just see all of these stun markers appear all over your guards and you don't know where they are because they're all stealth um, or they'll be behind a few things and and you'll you'll try and find them and eventually you do see them you, you get them in your sights you can um, you can mark them but they're only marked for a few minutes or a few or maybe about 30 seconds so you can either have to run towards them and like blasting the hell out of them because you don't have to stealth it because you're defending or you can wait until they get closer to you and take them out it's it's really difficult but they no matter what happens whatever they take while they're on your base so if they um, Fulton a number of your guards and they take a number of your resources they're theirs so even if they get seen or you kill them, that's it. It's over. But they have can to get you, to. Can you can you get revenge though? Can you go back and as soon as their as soon as that happens, a wormhole opens and you've got like three days or whatever, three physical days to go back and uh, and take over their base. I actually did it with one guy. He was like he, he's he had he was like number one rank in the world. He must be going through everybody like on the planet. And he came out of my base. He took a very small amount of resources, but I went onto his and I, I just took all my heavy weapons, nailed a load of his guards, killed a load of people, extracted a load of people, and took about thirty or 40,000 of all of his resources. Um, and then I died because I wasn't intending to go and actually finish the FOB mission, but I still stole all his resources. But this this thing that's come out is you can actually insure your base, so whatever you lose, you can get it back if you've insured your base, but you have to pay real money for it. So this is where, this is where the pay to kind of win thing comes in. I'm not that bothered, I'll be honest. I don't get infiltrated. That's more pay to not lose, isn't it, than pay to win? Yeah, pay to not lose the resources that you've gathered in the real in the single player game that you can go and regather for free anyway if you really want. You know, it's a very easy way to uh, not lose any resources on your FOB base. Don't have one. Don't don't play. Yeah, don't have one. Don't play online. Or don't go. Or don't go online. Yeah. Um, it's not that. I mean, I said I've been infiltrated a few times, so it's not like a problem. I've only voluntarily infiltrated not retaliating um a few times myself uh, with other people so it's not that much of a problem for me but it's there and it's like some people are a bit miffed with it oh excuse me mm. any other metal gear solid stuff while we're here oh yes kojima is apparently still an employee at economy mm. after all that i think they've just been pulling our plods you this think this whole... was a big, uh, a big piece of performance art? Hmm, marketing. To he's get... done shit like this before. Yeah, he's d well, he's done it quite a lot. I, I'm. It doesn't particularly bother me. I was always going to buy the game anyway, and it's a really, really good game, so I don't regret it. But for fuck's sake, what do you think, Sam? Um, I don't know. I, I don't really know what to believe with this kind of shit anymore. Uh. Yeah, he supposedly he'd left, then he's not. I don't. I actually really don't know where it's coming from. I don't know what I it's up to. Like, it's it's the kind of thing where I'm just like, uh, I'm actually not bothered about all this behind shit as much anymore. I just want to finish the game now. It's it's out. It's released. See how it goes from there. Like, well, there's a lot had, of just bullshit, isn't there? He's had a farewell party, um, but he's he's still, you know, he's still apparently he's just on a long holiday after the game. He's not been fired after all of those news reports and everything that was that was going. There was months and months and months of it leading up to the release, though. Mm. That's a bit underhanded. Sorry, are you going to say something there? Or are you just uh, um, nursing just your jaw? I saw. Go. <laughs> go on, it's quite underhanded. It's quite underhanded, isn't it? If it's found out to be that that was the case, then they're going to lose some respect of their audience, aren't they? Oh, how are they? How do you feel about it? I, I, I have... I would... I don't care either way. Because they're just going to release... If they release another Metal Gear, I'm sorry, I'm glutton for it. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I mean, I've got bloody if Metal they, Gear Rising. I've never played it, for God's sake. If they release it... If they, I'll release a Metal... If, what should I say? What do I mean? <laughs> if, no Metal Gear so far has, has been bad, in my opinion. Even though we kind of slagged off Metal Gear Solid 2. For its time when it came out, that game was was pretty goddamn awesome, mm. and I loved it at the time. And I played through it like fucking seven, eight times, like quite close together. So I've I've really enjoyed all of them, the main ones that I've played. 
And so they've not done, in my opinion, hasn't made a bad Metal Gear game yet. So when the next one comes out, I have no precedent to say that it won't be good. <laughs> well, hopefully that Kojima's involved in it. You know, I think he wasn't really the he wasn't really the the, the director of um, Rising. That was a spin off done by Platinum with his hmm. intellectual property. I think this is an astounding game. It's not just good. It's it's a it's downright almost perfect for my tastes. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. So, I've yeah, I'm, I've got no problem buying the next game. It's bloody impressive. I mean, if they if they were the kind of DLC that I'd like for Metal Gear Solid Five, is give me a new open world map and give you some more missions. That I'd be like, yeah, I'll totally buy that DLC. Yeah, give I think I more, would. Give me more stuff to play, and I'll play it. I will. So. It, it, I, I, I don't know what to feel about the Kojima thing because we kind of Metal Gear fans expect to be dicked around uh, with, <laughs> with regards to Metal Gear it's kind of like part and parcel we got dicked around about Raiden and everything and then got dicked around about the third one not being about Solid Snake at all either uh, so all this kind of shit is kind of like par for the course this is more than usual hmm. or maybe it's a case that maybe he was leaving they've negotiated it and he's come back and now they're trying to there was some pretty up. bad animosity there though that's the problem there was there was some reported reportedly pretty bad animosity there was a leaving party but the leaving party could be construed in any way you want it to be you know he could have like, just sounds like professional wrestling this isn't it um it, i don't know <laughs> i really don't know i mean obviously we only get what's reported we don't get anything from the horse's mouth. There's obviously a lot of, um, I don't know, I don't know if NDA is the right word to use there, but there's, a, uh, you know, they have to keep a lot of trade secrets, and they can't just talk about what goes on in the office, you know, not in that, not in the yeah. games industry, because there's yeah. too much slander as it stands, for God's sake. So, don't know, but I don't, I don't care one way or the other. I have to be honest with you. I'm, I'm still going to buy the next one. Moving on. Yeah. I'm just, I'm waiting for the um the, the grudge match between Kojima and Phil Fish. The cage cage match or something. Why why would that happen? Because what that's, do they have? that's that's the that's the national that that's a natural conclusion to this kind of drama, is that he's gonna have to fight someone publicly. F Phil Fish has disappeared off the internet a, no, a good while back. No, though. no, he hasn't disappeared off the internet, he's just training, he's bulking up ready to well, fight. He, he did Kojima. disappear for a while, then he came back and then he disappeared, then he came back and now he's Anyway, we're talking about him, so let's not. Um, <laughs> Microsoft HoloLens news. Uh, there was a release of some details for HoloLens. Quite different. We're considering it's it's not a direct competitor, but it's uh, it's competing a little bit with VR. Um, the dev kit that's coming out for Microsoft HoloLens is three grand, three thousand dollars. Ouch. Um, it's going to be available from the first quarter of 2016. And you can have wearable holograms. Now, there's a, um, a video that I'm going to paste into chat. And there's a guy who is... I know it's obviously staged, but there's a guy wearing a hologram and shooting with it. You know, like a Mega, mega Man gun type thing. And, I mean, it looks impressive. Again, don't know what is actually going to what it's actually going to be like till you get your hands on it. Uh, right. But yeah, it's a so, three three grand versus what three hundred three hundred quid. That's yeah, quite, I mean, but the, uh, you, with this you get a laptop, uh, you get, and it's a all of it should work, you know, together. It's it's a, a full. Also, you get kit. a machine with it. Oh, yeah, okay. you get a full kit, and I, there'll be a reason for that. It'll be something to do with custom custom hardware, I imagine. Mythalos mentioned the thing, which is the big thing for me, which is the field of view. Hmm. Um, I've seen, You've I've, mentioned it a few times, yeah. Yeah, I have mentioned it, and um, I've, I've seen reviews from people who've actually used it, and they say that it's basically like a, a kind of, not a postage stamp, but maybe a postcard held in front of you. And that's a... Is immersion the right thing to be talking about with with? But they'll, they'll improve that though. Look at the look at the Oculus. Look at VR. The first generation yeah. is going to be terrible. Yeah, I mean, this is a first generation. Look at your Riflu. The first generation of that, the screen door problem. Well, this one does as well. Crescent Bay does, yeah. in fact. Yeah, I mean, essentially, it's not about immersion with with holograms because it's not trying to take you out of your world. It's an overlay. No, it's trying to augment the world. Yeah. And there's been a lot of people that, oh, the field of view's crap. 
I very much doubt that any of these people have actually had first hand experience of it. Yeah. We don't know, do we? I mean, everything that they show, everything that they show uses a camera, a, a special camera, so the audience can see what's going on on the screen. So we don't really know what goes on behind the scenes there. It's all scripted. I mean, that guy was moving his hand and he had a hologram attached to him. I mean, there wasn't anything scripted about that. That was definitely attached to him in some way, but, you know, we don't really know. I mean, a camera's FOV is what, by default, 90? No. Depends on the lens. Yeah, it depends on the lens. Standard TV camera, wide-angle lens. Uh, wide angle, you don't get 90 degree in TV normally. You normally get well, around it won't be, it won't 40, be 180, 50. will it, like we've got, so. We've no, got but about 170, we've got about 173 so, or something like that, but there's a lot of peripheral stuff going on there, but let's not yeah. get into that. But the cameras, is, is it going to be the same FOV as the cameras exactly? Or is it going to be uh, like thinner than that, if you know what I mean? Is it going to be represented properly on the screen? Uh, that they show us in these tech demos. That's what I'm trying to get to. The way I've heard it described is it's like a floating window in front of you. And that you can move your eyes around and you're looking outside of the window. The the, the holograms have a sharp edge that gets cut off. That's how I've heard it described. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Okay, there's a few stories that are a couple of weeks old aren't particularly relevant. Um, BBC starting to cover some esports, which I think is uh, interesting. In that, you know, games are start really are starting to get taken a bit more seriously these days because esports is big. You know, we know it's pretty big. It's a multi-million-dollar business. It's big, but it's nowhere near as big as just people playing Minecraft or GTA Five online, which is the huge thing at the moment. Yeah, Twitch you know, streams just, and yeah. Yeah, just just people playing. Well, not even Twitch. Just the episodic content of people playing games and reacting to them is one of the biggest things on YouTube at the moment. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, anyway, I, I just it's just worth a mention. I'm not going to go into the article like, a while since I read it anyway, but yeah. it's interesting. It, it's getting noticed now to the point by the big corporations. You know, they've got their eyes on it, and it's interesting to me. Anyway, I'm, I don't particularly like watching play, people play games. I'm not into the esports, but. I do like playing games. So. Yeah, I think you have to have an appreciation for the game to be able to watch it. Like, I to... really enjoy playing Supreme. Com I enjoy watching Supreme Commander videos, but only because I know how to play the game. If I didn't know how to play the game, I'd be completely flummoxed by it. Mm. Yeah, totally. I mean, I've watched a few RTS games and not known what the hell's going on, and I've been like, yeah, I, "What's the point?" <laughs> I've tried to watch StarCraft videos, and I just don't get it. I've mm. not played the game. That kind of applies to a lot of other sports as well. If you don't understand the rules of cricket, then you're not, you're not. If you haven't really played it or you don't really get it, then watching it on TV is not going to do it for you either. Yeah, but you tend to learn the rules of the game. Like people who watch football can yeah, you appreciate would do that a game. If you're watching a computer game as well. Yeah. You what? Sorry. I guess so. I guess if you think as if much you're time watching into a game it. that you hadn't played, you'd eventually pick up the rules. Yeah. yeah, you would if you if you persevered, or if you had more importantly, which is what you get with other sports, other people around you telling you what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Like if you go and watch a random game of cricket, or like for a start, for people like you or I or whatever, it's going to be because someone else is already watching it, and then you go, "What happened there?" and they go, "Oh, this." Whereas if you sat at home on your own on your laptop watching it on YouTube or whatever, or on the BBC as it may be, then it's it's a different kind of experience. But it's the same principle, my point. Mm. But it's interesting that a mainstream, you know, broadcaster's starting to take it seriously. It's not just a indie broadcaster or, you know, some obscure cable channel. It's, That's what's it, interesting. You know, it's, it seems like to me it's a little bit how things, uh, the channel ESPN sort of formed in the United States, didn't it? When it was covering the, these like sports that were on the fringe of, of the yeah. mainstream, and now skating. Is totally like a, a you know a huge sort of mainstream. It's maybe not as big as it was in its heyday, but it's th those kind of ESPN sports is more uh, mainstream than they once were. It was like who the hell's going to watch this on TV? Well, quite a lot of people. Hmm. Mm. Anyway, so yeah, it's, it's an int intriguing little development. World of Goo designers. Uh, obviously, I've played World of Goo, and I think Steve and Lou have. Yeah, uh, I've I've seen it. I've played it myself. 
I thought you recommended it to me, Lou. I thought you'd played World of, World of Goo. Yeah, huh. I think Greg played it. Oh, you've, you've, you, PC. you were definitely the one who recommended it to me, so I thought I assumed you'd played quite a lot of I've it. I've never played it. I can't recommend a game I haven't played. Weird. Anyway, um, World of Goo is a, a kind of puzzle. You connect little blobs together and get around obstacles and win levels, basically. Um, but they've brought out a new game I thought it was worth mentioning because I thought you guys knew it, but you don't. So is it like World Obscene of Goo? Human Resource Manager. So it is, yeah, it's Human Resource Manager. I'm just showing a bit oh, of it she. now. Yeah, sorry, Human Resource Machine. And it's just a puzzle game, but it's something to do with programming. You, pro you, you write programs in it, and you use those programs to complete the level somehow. I, I don't know, I haven't played it, but it, I, I, I'm quite interested in it, and I should probably get it, to be fair. Okay. So this I think I've seen something about this. Logic gates and yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what's going on here. Probably not worth watching for now. Oh. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, have you have you experienced this, uh, Steve, in Hearts of Stone? Um, if you exploited um, Witcher Three, as in you right. you use the uh, the cow hide exploit to get loads of money, or yeah. there's another, there's another, there's a few other exploits as well. If you get Hearts of Stone, the dev have programmed into it that a tax man will come and try and collect taxes from you. <laughs> and um, the the good thing about it is they allow you to be to lie to the tax man so they don't take the money off you. Yeah. But it's interesting that again they've done another thing that in the game that addresses an issue that was their problem but in a nice novel way and I think it's really cool again. Can you oh, kill the tax nice, man? Uh, I don't know, probably. No. Tax man would probably be at level 700. Um he's probably <laughs> a, an M, you know an NPC you can't attack or something to that effect. Uh but anyway, yeah, I thought it was a quite a, quite a cool little thing. That's cool. A Quirky little way of getting around it. But it's the same as the the whole that that exploit the the way that they patched the exploit. If you remember, they sent you a, a level sixty bull at you that you could kill, but he was really really difficult to to kill. A beautiful fourth wall breaking that isn't it? It's a really nice way of tackling that. But they didn't really. They, yeah, fourth wall would be a would be pointing out that you've done something wrong. Whereas this but it is is within the game. Uh, it's kind of meta, isn't it? Yeah, it's re it's it's. It's not really strictly fourth wall, but anyway, semantics again. <clears throat> uh, Valve survey reveals most users will not upgrade their PCs for VR. What do you think about that? I think most most users will probably already have a decent gaming rig anyway. Well, there was uh, the the the, um, the stats within the within there, let me find them. It actually says something like, most people, 70% or something. Let me find the, the exact figures. 90% of users said they would buy a new PC for VR. Well, 42% said they would use their current PC. So I imagine that would be us. Although, I don't think any of our PCs would be, will be good enough for VR quite, quite yet. I think. Not well. Two, I mean, my my 980 struggles with a 4K screen. So if you're rendering two 1080p screens for each eye, which you should be by the time the at least 1080p, isn't it, per eye? Yep. There is a rendering spec. I'm rendering three above 1080p screens now. Hang on, hang on. You're rendering three screens, but yeah. you're not rendering. One screen hardware acceleration for so via one output. I'm talking about here. So, one output rendering a game like a modern game like Witcher 3 at 4K on my so that's four screens, four 1080p screens via one output. I'm sure there's some hardware stuff I could get in, we could get into here, but I don't understand it myself. It's not possible on a 980 at full settings. I can render old games at 4K if they support the 4K resolution. Um, but with you know all the new um, hair work stuff and even a lot of the new shader uh, stuff that's in in a lot of the more modern games, I cannot render a 980 at 4K. Four monitors on four separate outputs is fine. I'm sure I could have four 4K monitors uh, if I had four deep 
dp outputs on my monitor uh, on my graphics card but that's just a 2d resolution isn't it it's not full what's your issue with the bandwidth of the uh, the output i don't know if it's the bandwidth i don't really know what the problem is i just know that a 98 my 980 which is nearly top of the line it's not the 980 ti it's just the normal 980 cannot render modern games at 4k you need at least a few gpus you need at least two to render a 4k screen so what i'm well, saying is other... currently if we if they release a 1080p screen one per eye i think current hardware as we stand right now will struggle but you wouldn't well, be running thing... 4k if it was two 180p no, no. screens no you'd be running 2k no no you'd be running 4k oh my god no you'd be running half 4k which isn't yeah. 2k it's 2k is 1080p pretty much well, the other thing to take into account here is that VR is very um, reliant on a steady high frame rate as well. So you need that's... 90 FPS, 120 FPS, maybe. Right. So that that makes that's my point. Even that makes my point even more valid. That its current hardware is going to struggle. When I ran your DK2 on my machine, I didn't have my 4K screen. Right. It doesn't matter. Stuck. Shut up about 4K screen. Right, that that it it struggled. My 980 struggled um, with. Uh, the current DK2, so it's going to struggle Yeah, which is 1080p halved. It went fine for things like Port, um, Half-Life 2, because that's an old game with old technology. That, that was fine. That was 60 FPS constantly. But Well, 75 in the DK2. Okay, well, whatever it was, it ran perfectly fine on my computer, but when I tried mm. to run more modern games, it was starting to really struggle. Excuse yeah. me. Skyrim still doesn't run brilliantly on my 970. In VR. So what kind of stands out to me is that there's still, you know, like VR with it being in its infancy, there's a lot of optimization to be had. Mm. And, you know, at, at the minute, you're running whatever graphics card and trying to output two, two separate like, video streams, essentially. Yep. And it doesn't need to be that. It needs to be one stream, but from two point of views. But that means you've got to render the scene twice. You've got to There's render the scene really twice. Of a way but, that. Oh, but you don't have to, for example, cache the textures twice. You don't have to do all that right. technical effects twice. So you can streamline it with a certain point and then branch off at the last minute. There'll be well, driver optimization stuff they can do for it's that. Not, no, it's not just driver that I. I, I Again, this is all conjecture because I'm not. I'm certainly no expert in this in this domain. But there's something to do with current. Um, anything up to the 980 anyway the 980 ti is the first card that has some kind of vr capability that's got a specific pipeline built into it that caters for this probably exactly what you're just talking about it has some kind of single pipeline that then splits it out into two for the main um the main gpu functions up until a point yeah. um and uh, even things like uh as you, as you again mentioned drivers mantle and um Nvidia Gameworks is it? Is that the the Mantle? Mantle is the ATI version or the AMD Catalyst. version rather? No, no. Mantle is the new oh, the API game. framework and um, a, a low level framework that they're using for newer games. Gameworks, I think, is the Nvidia version of that. And there is there are certain optimizations that they're doing within those APIs that allow for this kind of thing. And v with VR, depending on obviously these, they have to make a call as well at some point and go is VR going to be big enough for us to invest millions of dollars into this into you know pushing this but they're working with Oculus and they're working with Facebook and everybody else that's doing all the VR stuff to get things past you know this this point when when what's it called Morpheus comes out for the PlayStation is the PlayStation mm. 4 going to be capable of it I mean, that's oh, yeah, because it'll be built for the PlayStation 4. It, yeah, it, it will be better. It, it will be tailored. Be I mean, it, consoles have the, the, the uh, benefit of static hardware, haven't they? Hmm. But is it is it going to be is the current hardware going to be capable of it? Because they didn't build the PlayStation 4 with VR or heavy VR use in mind, did they? Not really. No, but they are, they are building the Amorpheus to make use of the PlayStation 4's features, so I think it'll be fine. Yeah. They can't deliver a substandard VR product on a on a static machine. That just you, you couldn't deliver that. No, but yeah, as I said, I think I still think they've got a long way to go, hardware and software-wise and drivers, driver-wise. So, 
I think Steve's right. I think the, the, the problem is at the moment the brute force. They're basically just rendering the scene twice from two slightly different viewpoints. And what they need is a, a VR API, a framework in between the, the device and the game, which does some clever stuff so it doesn't have to basically repeat itself go and watch some Carmack talks on YouTube because he, he goes I've into quite, quite a lot I've of detail and it, yeah, most he, of it I, is well over my head <laughs> well some of the some of the talk is about foveated rendering where basically you render the high detail where you're looking and you use eye tracking to basically not render as much detail in your periphery oh right that's That'd That's be one of the clever ways around it, but obviously that requires eye tracking and it needs, needs to be fast enough so that you don't notice when things are shitty looking when you're not looking at them. Hmm. There's all sorts of tricks. Yeah, and so that'd be, that'd be already, quite interesting. Currently, there's all lo loads of tricks just to get rid of the um, the, the, the lag. There's, there's 2D transforms on the image to make sure that it looks like it's kind of moving. There's lots of clever stuff involved in VR. We're only scratching the surface of it at the moment because yeah, we're yeah. still at the dev kit stage. And, the st and everyone's pushing for a, a commercial release. And I said the first commercial release is... It matters, though, doesn't it? It matters whether or it's not going to work. It'll be... It'll be a, a make-or-break moment, I think. And they're still talking about quarter two, quarter one of 2016, aren't they? Yep. Hmm. We'll see. See about that. Okay, moving on. Uh, don't care about StarCraft 2 news. No, me neither. We've done the Gwent one. Yeah, we talked about the Gwent multiplayer. And. Uh, oh, Batman Arkham Knight was re released on, is going, is re -released on Steam today. So that means my game will be patched and I will be able to actually play it. It did have a patch a while back, but I never got the chance to play it um, <coughs> since then. But now I think it's supposed to have been properly re-released and fixed up. So I think I can actually now have a go. So wish me luck. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, hope, hopefully it'll work for you. It's, it's a pretty good game. Yeah. I said I wasn't having that many problems, but I wanted to, I wanted to leave it. I'll probably restart, to be fair. Uh, Oculus Rift DK2 now sell, uh, sells out, finally. Yeah, um, can't buy them anymore. No, they're, they they're, have, but you can buy them on eBay and stuff. And if anyone wants to buy mine, then I might be open to offers. But yeah, nah, nah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a toy at the best at the moment. Uh, it's it is. the co the the with the commercial release looming, you might as well just wait for the next release now. Yeah, and. Last two two news stories. Who someone else? Yeah, is let's here. let's skip the let's skip the elite dangerous one for now. The other one, just quickly, is that Chaos Reborn has finally been released. Uh, one point zero, as of a few days ago. Um, there's a lot of reviews for people who don't understand that it's a game based on randomness and chaos. Who are saying why don't the enemies have any hit points or anything like that? I think it's too based on luck. Well, yeah, that's the whole point. Um, I will be able to tell you more about it when I play it because I'm going to be having a few games maybe tomorrow with friends. Yeah, but if there's absolutely well. if there's absolutely zero consistency within a game, it might be nice as a concept, but not good as a computer game. Maybe that's where the review criticisms are coming from. What the, what, what, what it would get for. The, 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 the problem people have is that you can be trouncing your opponent, and then through a, a lucky event, they can win the game by like. A lucky shot on you or something like that and it leaves a sour taste in your mouth when you're good at the game and someone happens to kill you just on a chance that that's not on you, nobody wants that no yeah no, do they people people are complaining about that people who have not played the original chaos which the original chaos was like that as well right but so it doesn't it mean that it was a good original, design choice well it worked better in the original chaos i'm actually not much of a fan of the give chaos uh, reborn as it stands, but I've not played it since the final release. I get the feeling I'm not going to be that much of a fan of it, unfortunately. It's funny that coming from uh, someone who's making a rival. Yeah. <laughs> if someone who could think of ways you to do it You don't like right. the competition. It, uh, speaking of making a rival, Lou, how's that going? It's going brilliantly. Is it not? <laughs> Is it not going? Are you re have it. you restarted it another six times? Or? I haven't touched it in probably a couple of years now. Yeah. Anyway, so on that note, we shall close the show. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. 
And uh, thanks for everybody to t- turning up this week as well. Sorry for the late finish. Yeah, it's, yeah, sorry for dragging it on for an extra half an hour tonight, but uh, we had a lot to talk about. We've had about four weeks of uh, news to catch up on. Uh, again, we may not be back next week, but we may or may not be. I am trying to put a few more videos on YouTube. Uh, I've done a few Metal Gear Solid uh, 5 videos. I've done a few reviews. I've done a few little let's plays etc i'm not particularly interesting to watch but please go and watch me and tell me what i'm doing wrong like everybody else on youtube is doing at the moment and uh <laughs> chris you need to be screaming more you I need do, to play I grand do. theft auto 5 or minecraft and you need to shout out the screen I, I've, I've i was trying to look at I, I, I was looking at other youtubers and thinking why are they popular why have they got two million viewers and i watched them and i couldn't watch more than 20 seconds of their videos without wanting to hurl things at them chris mm. play a really scary game like system shock 2 or alien isolation no I just sh- i just shit my pants yeah That's you would be interesting no but i wouldn't no, <laughs> I, I don't emote i just shit my pants and dream about it that's that's that. I'm Just not gonna record the, the sleeping afterwards. Edit in the best bits where you wake up in a cold sweat, clawing at the duvet. Yeah, I'm I'm not a let's player. Let's say I think I'm better at the the old um, instruction. I, I quite enjoy doing the Metal Gear Solid videos. I haven't had that many views, but I, I've actually got a lot more views on my dev videos. Things that you know I'm I know about. <laughs> It's uh, games. I, I think there are people who are better at let's plays than I, a lot better at let's plays than I am. But anyway, thank you very much for everyone in chat, and thank you very much to you guys. Uh, for those of you who might be new, because I think there's a few new people in chat that haven't really been saying much, you can check us out on uh, our website www.resonancearcade.com. We're on youtube.com forward slash resonance arcade and uh, Twitter and Facebook forward slash resonance arcade. That's not one URL. That's two. And We'll catch you later. We'll see you next week, hopefully, or whenever we see you see again. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.